What's up? It's taken me one week to do this intro because I'm moving house. It's an absolute pain in the ass. There's crap everywhere. I can't really be bothered to do anything, but I need to do everything. If you know what I mean. Packing boxes. Boring, boring, boring. The good news, however, is, as you'll see if you're watching this on YouTube, um... The podcast is video now, and the whole move is a facilitation of making that look cool. So basically, I'm moving into a place which is going to look awesome for the podcast. And it's easy to get guests. It's going to be super easy to get them in. All video, all HD. This episode is, um, sounds like I'm going to say brought to you by, but look, no one's given me money yet, so... You know, chuck me a quid on the Patreon, patreon.com slash the downbeat. Seamless, seamless plug. Getting too good at these. This episode is uh, was my first attempt at the video stuff. So there's, if you're watching it, there's some frame rate issues. Give me a fucking break. I learned how to be a cameraman, TV producer in the pandemic. I'm still learning. I'll be honest with you, I'm getting a bit obsessed with it. I actually really like all the boring grading shit, making stuff look cool, B-roll, bokeh. All of the buzzwords. So what I've done as well is I've ordered a bunch of stuff to, this word makes me puke, but to vlog going on tour. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on this to hold myself accountable that I'm going to do it. Um, go and chuck me a subscription on YouTube if you want to see that kind of stuff. If you don't want to see that kind of stuff, please just tell me by not watching it, because then I don't have to do it. I want to do it, but if it's not going to make me any money, I don't give a fuck, really. Um, My guest this week is Ali Richardson, of Bleed From Within fame. Um, It's been a long time coming. I thought he hated me, if I'm honest with you. He moved to Reading when I moved to Glasgow. We swapped places. Um, So basically, we haven't spoke at length for a while. I thought he hated me. It was a great little chat. We got pretty pissed, courtesy of Drop Project the Brewery, which is uh, not a plug, but they did send me them for free, and they were very nice. The only reason they sent me them for free is because I was shouting my ass off about them on Instagram, and they said, hang on, do you want a crate? And I said, absolutely fucking lootly I want a crate. And then they sent me a crate. I drank them with Ali. We got pissed up. I was really hung over the next day. So towards the end of the podcast, you can notice that I'm pretty pissed. Which, if you're American, that means drunk, bro. Uh, what do we talk about? We talk about absolutely everything. A lot of stuff about drums. A lot of stuff about drum techs. What it takes to be a good drum tech. Uh, Ali's looking for a drum tech, actually. So we sort of put an ad in about that. It was a really great chat. He's a great dude. Check out Believe From Within. Um, they're criminally underrated as a band. Um, yeah. Sally Richardson on the Downbeat Podcast. Is everything else? This is recording. Now. Is it started? It's apparently started. I hope to fucking God that it works. Fine for you. Get close to that microphone for Sorry. me. See, this yeah, is why yeah. I wanted you to have headphones. I'll, I'll bring it right up here. Are you glad you refuse to do things like this? Uh, well, you're, you're, uh, who's fiending for the beer more, me or you? Oh, if anyone's just watching this and not on the audio one, that's Ali and this hey. is me. Yeah, there we go. This, If you're listening to the boring audio one, like some sort of caveman... You better this, not be after the effort that Craig has put into this. It has to be said. Has to be said. The most amount of effort I've this ever taken. I've been sitting here life. for an hour, absolutely choking for a can. He's been. I've, been, he's I've been even had to. Here. I've had to like uh, change the background. Now the background was already there. I, was, yeah, I walked in and it was practically like this. But you know, you're talking about a hundred second, millisecond uh, sync. Sync offset and S log one zero three. S log two, actually, if you're asking. Oh, Christ, Shooting at S log two. All the absolute nerds. Um, this is so. This is an episode that should have happened a long time ago. And what we've done, I've used it as a tester. This, thanks to the Patreon, is what 
I want every episode to be like, I want Amazing. the guest to come to the house. To the kitchen. It's going to be no, from the fridge. new place. There's going to be a little yep, thing. Yep, you'll see. Um, and it just be set up real nice. That'll be there. The dogs, the cats, the energy. There's a coffee machine. If it was in the daytime, we could have had a coffee. I fucking hate coffee. Is it? Can I just don't drink hot drinks? I just can't. I've never done it. Never liked it growing up. I just never liked it as a kid. And see, now it seems like one of those that almost seems like a vice. Do you know what I mean? A tour with guys like Davey and Kennedy are just, they wake up and it's like, they can't even start the day without a coffee. Do you smoke? No, guys like on tour. No, no, I don't smoke. What do you do? Da, 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 da. <laughs> right, I'm going to talk you through what we're drinking because yeah. not yeah. an official sponsor, right? I don't have any, but... Get the downbeat glass and shot. You can hold it up to your camera. I'll hold it up to mine. Look at this. Eventually, right, I will have someone doing these buttons for me, but it didn't work out today. Um, so we can look at it now. Can I look at it? You can look at it with what your... What have we got? You've got Long Haul, a New England IPA. One of from my fav- favourite style of beer. It's right my here. favourite style, definitely. Yeah. Um, from Drop Project and One Drop Brewing. I believe One Drop are Australian, so fuck knows how they've done that. They collab. are. Reading the back of the can, I can confirm that they are indeed Australian. Uh, you can read. It's, believe it or not, great <laughs> education system in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Drop projects are fucking great. I do like their stuff. Not an official stuff. sponsor, but they do be sending me cans. They do. I, I, I see that fridge. I get regular can updates from yourself. And whenever, I, whenever a shipment comes in, you're just like, why are you not doing this fucking podcast? Look at this fridge full of fucking cans. The, the thi- amount of times I've had that. <laughs> the <laughs> thing is, right... I let's fucking get this let's, going. I, come on, come I'm on. so thirsty. We need to get started on this. No, How many have we matter. got to go through here? Can't. I want to make this one of the well. Yeah. Oh, there's two. Greg did there's... tell me before he started this that he's he's drunk on most of his episodes. So uh, maybe I'm not the first to get him shit faced, but I would like us to get a wee a wee charge on us by the end. Cheers, mate. Cheers, man. To, just... to the podcast that should have happened. Well, you mentioned this earlier. You touched on it. I was meant to be one of the first. I remember you gave me a shout, you gave because your first was Jay, right? It was Jay Tesser. Yeah, yeah, I wanted you to be one of Aye, one of the first ones. What did you do? You fucking blew me off. Well, it was the same as every time you've asked me to do this so far. There's been something that's just came up. Like, there's been some. There's been a tour. There's been practicing. I've been traveling. I was moving house. I was moving down to London. I was moving to Reading. Something was always at the time where you said. Let's do it. And then you, I think you started to get a complex and you thought I was blowing you off. And you I just, did. I did. You don't want to do I'm the I'm sure I've slagged you me. off on the podcast before for that exact reason. Well, I wouldn't fucking know. I don't listen to podcasts. That's the thing as well. I, I've, I've listened to some Frank. of yours because I'll get people, I mean, this sounds really vain, but people will tell me, they'll be like, you're in this podcast. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm hell. slagging and I'll you be off. Like, I'm like, what's he fucking said? I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm slagging you off because I want you to be in, One, in the podcast. One, I play Yamaha and two... You want to meet and be in the podcast? Or no? Nah, it might just be a drinking issue. You might just be talking about other people that drink a lot, as well as myself, Fair. which is quite quite like. Oh, you. that is that is fucking. That is just. I want to talk about endorsements while we're on this mm-hmm. thing right now. I'm going straight in. Straight I've in. had people. I've heard it on the grapevine. You know who you are. Oh, I love this power. <laughs> um, people who oh, I don't like it now. There's not enough drummers on there, on the podcast. I can show you the figures. No one gives a fuck about drummers. But I was going to say, I think you're doing quite all right but, without the drummers. But the problem is, right, I care. I only care about the drums and the gym, and that's it. So try and, and yeah, that's it. So trying to have a conversation about other shit, I just can't do it. Well, I guess it's kind of interesting. It's not you, you tail off and, you know, they're not. Yeah. But like, to but do at the end a, of the day, you just want to be chatting shit a bit. To do an episode every week. Is mm. too tough because it's just like I don't want to fucking you. Me, if I just point this at your mouth a little bit, I wish you were wearing headphones. Just be da, as close, yeah, da, da. be as close as fuck to it. Um, the reason I'm not wearing headphones is because I did this noise earlier, and it sounded like I was. Oh, I didn't like it. See, I'm a drummer. I don't. I, I don't. But you, I very rarely. I'm in a situation where I have to wear headphones and listen to my own voice getting blasted into my brain. Do you know what I mean? It's not. I'm so arrogant. I love it. It's very, like, I've got like this, like it's called Loves like the a, sound of his own voice. Much. I got a big, big bottom on it, so it's like, ooh, oh, manly. Ooh. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm such oh. a man. Oh, now you say that. We make. Do you want the cans we, on? Do you want the cans on? Give me two cans, right? And then a third. And then the, cans. the cans. All right, got it. Um, this is what I want to talk about endorsements. Okay. Um, because Drop Project 
they give me beer for free. Mm. My views on endorsements pretty much are... It's not an endorsement, you can't be endorsed by beer. But if someone gives me something for free that I am buying anyway, then that's as good as money, so I'll take it. So, like, I won't take free shit for the sake of free shit, but if you're going to give me 24 cans of beer... That's going to save me, like, 24 good cans of beer is saving me, like, 100 quid. Yeah, of course. I mean, free sake for the... I do love a bargain, it has to be said. But I wouldn't... Scottish. Take, I wouldn't... Take, exactly. You can take the man out of Scotland. <laughs> but I wouldn't... I wouldn't take free shit as something that I thought was shite. I would probably try something if they said... They were, Let me try, send a sample of this, whether it be... I mean, I, I've never been sent... I've been sent some free beers, and it's never shit beer. It's always good. But, like, some drum stuff, you know, if it was let us send you this so you can see what you think and if it's crap I'll be like it's crap I'm not going to post about it if I do it'll be a scathing review thanks for letting me try this it's not my thing mm. but uh, yeah I think what you're what you're saying there is like if you're already into a company I mean I'm saying this I got in with Yamaha because they sent me a free kit and before that I was playing a Pero Export up to that point yeah but did you need a free kit well, I was playing a Pearl Export with a fucking Gibraltar rack that was held So you needed a free table. kit. So, so I needed it. I was in the market for a kit and they said we are, they were promoting at the time, I think it was the Rock Tour Custom. And you remember this kit because we played a show together. I think you were in Dead Swans at the time. Who knows? Remember I'm that show? So many it was like the Club bands. Academy. It was us. I think Sleeps were there. Uh, yeah, anyway. Oh, I, I was just. I remember that night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like we can get into that later. Um, but can, can I, that, we that, actually? Was, that was the first, that was the first time that was the first time I'd been using that kit really. And I remember you just being like, "Oi, oi, what's all this, sir? <laughs> fucking, that fucking was, that Matt, was, Matt Hardware, fucking." I don't know why you went Yorkshire there. That was in my Scarface arc. <laughs> <laughs> Without, but yeah, that was that was like the first. I, that was around right about the first time I was using that kit, and it was. It was amazing, do you know what I mean? And that's like going back to the endorsement thing, them sending that to me was was a blessing. And then that started, that was in 2010, I think. And I've been like a proud Yamaha artist since then because I realized like even for an intermediate level kit, I was like, this sounds fucking great. It's not like you went with a shit company because they had a free drum kit though, like yeah. crushed drums or something mental like that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like a free kit's a free kit. I was going to say SJC there, but they're definitely not shit. They're they? not anymore, are they? If there's anything moved, but uh, let me <laughs> let me set the fucking scene today, and I'll tell you because I haven't told you the, the the amount of shit I've been doing today. Go on. The plan that I've already said is to have a set up a podcast studio. This is what happened. I thought I was the cleverest person in the world. I'll get a Patreon. They'll pay for the gear and the rental on a room that I can use for drums and I can use for the expensive. podcast. That room is fucking expensive. Getting more expensive every year. So, yep, they just keep chucking it up. Fucking landlords to the lions. Um, so I move in on the de first day, a death metal band. Fair enough, they're quite good. Right next door. There's no way I can podcast in there. So I can't do it in here because I can't keep it set up all the time. Mm. But I've got a new place coming deliberately got a place where it's going to look awesome there's going to be an area for the podcast this is a test of the setup but there will be a jamie character like from joe rogan who oh, will be doing yeah right. who will be doing these buttons for me today i'm doing it which is using all of my brain power so if i just fucking zone out it's because i'm trying to do this i'll be talking the camera will be on you it's gonna be that's Did already happened twice. I saw it <laughs> out the corner of my eye, and I have to like like a little <laughs> like a blind. I need braille here to, to just all right. Don't do a fucking impression. <laughs> so, but this is uh, provided this works. I'm super fucking stoked, like insanely stoked. So now let's talk about you and the f okay. like. This never happened because. I'm just checking my brain. Um, <laughs> this never happened yeah, because... I can see you just looking straight, I, <laughs> looking at the screen at the corner. <laughs> if you're listening to the audio version of this, I'm sorry. Um, you moved to, to oh Reading God. and yeah, I moved to Glasgow. Other. Yeah, like fucking magnets just opposing... Just, Isn't it yeah. annoying? Because well, I, I ain't got to, any mates. I moved from Glasgow to London, I think in 2018, and I was there for a year. And at that point, you were still in Reading because I believe I came over a couple of times. I was working with a yeah. uh, 
place that I work, allotment. Shout out to those guys. Big shout and, uh, out. Yeah, we'll come back to them, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, I was in London, you were still in Reading, and then at the point where I knew I was moving over there, I think you'd, about it was to two the or three day. months previous, you'd just moved yeah. to Glasgow. And when I got there and I got settled, I, I sort of realised on social media, I was like, are you living there now? I was like, I just thought you were on holiday or something. I thought you were up seeing the missus family and then it sort of clicked and I was like are you fucking joking I move here after being pals for what 10 years yep. if not more and now I'm in Brighton so I'm even further away literally the arse end of the fucking next country next stop's fucking France so are I, you doing that no I'm a fuck oh, I no offence where's French. your girlfriend from she's German so could, that's definitely on the cards. Yeah, could Germany? UK fucking, is going to shit. I love Unless Germany. Scotland go independent and we'll jump, we'll jump up there. Would get you, a Scottish passport. Is that all it would take for you to come back here? Think of that fucking buying a sweet house and it costs nothing. <laughs> See, that, honestly, I've looked at the cost of houses. Like you know, I think ultimately at some point in my future, I'd probably buy a house in Glasgow. I'd, I'd yeah, love, I, love, I love that. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, the band's obviously based here, and you know, a property, good house prices. In Glasgow, and I would definitely consider that. Brighton is fucking extortionate. It's just London by the sea, but it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking great. I'm going to go out. Ideally, on I would have somewhere in Germany and somewhere. All right, fuck me. In Scotland. Well, you know, no the offense the to believe from within, but I don't think that's the band's happening. doing. Just you fucking wait. Just you wait, mate. Well, two them in, and two them in silosis like this. Oh yeah, shit. A two two houser. Um, I'll go on a limb with my camera switch I need to stop saying camera switch because if you're listening to the audio one you're going to fucking hate me there's three cameras um, there's fucking three motherfucker they cost so much money right I'm going to go out on a limb and say Glasgow is the best price of property to city ratio in the entire fucking world like I like in terms of how sick the I, city I, is for how yeah, much I it mean, costs to live in the city centre. I mean, if Hamburg's got the same kind of rate, then I'd I'd argue that's probably a close second. But I can't even I have say no idea actually. Yeah, exactly. I've got no idea. I yeah, think so it's why am I? Expensive. I don't know. I'm just that's where I want to go. So I'm just hoping. I'm <laughs> just right. hoping. And I'm like, I'm just like I reckon it's the best just, place in the world. I don't know a new house. So I don't know like, the property. The best fucking place. <laughs> I don't know the property prices anywhere other than the two places I've lived. So that's <laughs> based in Glasgow. He's like the best in the world. <laughs> Right fucking here. <laughs> what I should have said is just, it's the best fucking city. Come it, back. Is, it is amazing. I, I miss, I do miss Glasgow, but I mean, I'm back here all the fucking time. You know, I still, I miss living here. I miss just having my friends on speed dial and being able to shoot around to their house at the weekend or meeting at the pub. I miss having my fucking kit set up all the time because for anyone that doesn't know me on the podcast, I play a fucking ridiculous drum kit. It's exceedingly so large. And it's just where I'm at in Brighton at the moment. I need to, it's, it's, it lives in the attic in bits. And when I go and practice, I need to book for seven or eight hours and I go down and it takes me an hour and a half to set up. It takes me an hour and a half to take, that's three, you're talking nearly two to three hours just did you get for a, set up. Did you get a drum tech sorted out? Uh, for... A tour that you're doing, I don't know if you can announce it. Oh, for the end of the year, yeah. Uh, no, I haven't yet. If anyone's listening. Oh yeah, do this. Is this, this is the how, shout out for oh, No, because this is how I got Josh. Because I was just on tour and he was like, oh, I don't want to go home. And I'm only, he was doing merch for Loath. And he was a drummer and he was like, I don't really want to go home because the tour was sick. Um, can I just do it for free? And I'll drum tech for you. And I was like, in my head, it was like, I really want a fucking drum tech. So I'll just do it and I'll just pay him at the just end. Just pay him, yeah. And then he knew nothing about drum teching at all. I'm sure he doesn't fucking mind me saying this. He knew... At that point, he played the drums. He's a great drummer and you know, could tune drums or whatever, but didn't know That's anything about drum teching. But, nah, that, but so that, that and common sense and just you yeah, know, he, there are certain the common there are sense was things. taught. But no, the common sense was taught. But like, not really. Um, like just the tech stuff, like when to load in, when to do this, changeovers, good etiquette and stuff like that. But then I told him, I was like, if you want to do this for free, then come and have a you know come and do the tour and i'll just treat it like you're actually working that's a great point what makes a good fucking tech go into that in detail because i think there's a lot that there's a lot that a tech can do that would make them or if, even no sorry i'll rephrase that there's a lot that can make them good but there's you could do one of maybe three things and it would just make you a shite tech whether it's drums guitar 
whatever, just any member of crew, I guess. You know what? Do you want? Have you got an opinion first before I do mine? Uh, I think like I hate that kind of. I hate that entitlement. I hate them thinking they're part of the band. I hate them that kind of unless they unless they are told <laughs> coming to, in hot there with a fucking, fucking personality. This that's fucking true. Do you know what I mean? Thinking that they because I've seen it before where they think they are that and then they get bought down a peg by the band that they work for. Do you know what I mean? So I think it goes back to it, 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 goes, it goes to ego, which could you know we can go into that fucking later on. Talk about ourselves in the industry all we want, but you know I think there's a. <laughs> that's, that's a, that was a wink for the audience. If you're on audio, fucking grow up. Unless yeah, you're blind, exactly. then I'm sorry. Why is it with a bl- braille blind thing? Are you, I don't know. Do you I'm feeling, no, I'm feeling very thoughtful, thankful for my eyes. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, yours yeah. is just a pure personality beef. Well, no, well, not that. Okay, so what are we saying? Three things that make a bad tech, or three things that a tech could do that would... Okay, I want your three, then I'll do my three. Okay, uh, one, ego. Don't be an arse bandit. Number one, that's your number one. They're getting don't, fired for that above anything else. Don't be a dick. Because that that is, you can learn everything else. You can learn the little technical bits. You can learn how to fucking set that bit up. You can learn where to place that. You can learn where to put that. You can, yeah. Don't be a dick. Get on with folk. Don't be an arsehole. Don't be an arse bandit. I like that one. Okay. So no ego. Uh, second one, I punct- punctuality. I think that's important. Be where you need to be on time. That's my number one. We'll go into mine, but I think that's my number one. But I, I, I imagine a guy was punctual, but he's an arsehole. It has to be number one. You can't tour with somebody that's a prick. Ah, uh, true, true. Uh, yeah, but the punctuality is up there, and punctuality is top. And I think it, it comes into play mostly at uh, like festivals, for example. If your tech wasn't already building the kit, or you said, right, we're on stage at five, we're going to stage at half past two, I will get you there. Go and meet your pals. Go and have a pint. Do whatever. But we meet here. If they're not there at that time, you would be like. Where the fuck are so they? that's my number one. I'll take a little bit of an asshole to do with that because I myself was a tech that definitely had an ego and was definitely an asshole. <laughs> and my other, my, uh, one of my you, other you close friends, V Man, is also a, an asshole, lovely asshole. He's a lovely asshole. Aye. Yeah, but so am I. But we both got fucking egos. We'll both tell you that we don't. But oh, we everyone's do. got an ego. If you're in the music industry, you carry an ego. If you're really good at your instrument, like he is. And you're a tech. And by proxy, you are. Well, here it is. Uh, <laughs> and no, but like, yeah. Um, okay. What's your number three? Uh, oh, just shit, we didn't even get to three, did we? So, um, yeah. Don't be an arse bandit. Punctuality. And uh, isn't arse bandit a slur for. I fucking hope not. I mean, you didn't I mean I, I, it. You I, I, didn't I, I mean don't it. Guess. Like, it's, it's, I'm using it in place of arsehole. Arse bandit. Okay. You've got Google there. Maybe you should go on it. No, this is what we need uh, the Jamie for. All right. This well, no, like we don't have Jamie, so I'm going to get cancelled. That's what No, I mean. you're not, because you didn't know. Good. Cancellations are over anyway. There's so much... Are they? Stu- yeah, it's done. done. It's done. Uh, I third one... Yeah, just, just... Unless you fuck a kid, then you're done. Oh, straight in the bin. Yeah, you yeah. are. But I reckon everyone's getting... Well, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but everyone's getting away with everything else. Anyway, don't want to talk about that. It's so boring. Every single podcast on earth talks about that. Mm-hmm. What is number three? <sighs> Just forever. I mean, this sounds really preachy. Forever being a student. Or be open to learn. I think that's it. Yeah. And because that all... that it Ties into ego as it well. It goes into ego. And it's yeah. that personality. It's that openness. So I think, you know, carry yourself with respect and don't be a fucking dick don't be an ass bandit as we said potential slur punctuality <laughs> and be open to learn I think those are the three uh, okay so mine what are yours they're gonna be very similar my number one and it's something that I had to teach Josh but I think he just didn't know if I look back to like when because he was doing it for free in his head I think what he thought was okay I'll just watch him when he plays the drums like, because when you think of drum tech, if like that's what you think, so he came on board, and then I just in my head was just assuming he knew like fully how to drum tech, and then it would be like, oh, we haven't loaded in yet, which means I need to help load in. Mm. And I, admittedly, if someone was doing it for free, I probably wouldn't want them to do that much stuff. I mean, tr- truth be told, so shout out to my boy Logan, Logan White. Um, he's been. 
I, I, he's landed quite a cushy job now. Uh, he's he's uh, he's kind of taken a step back from touring for the foreseeable. So hence, I was messaging you about potentially getting a tech for this tour at the end of the year. But Logan's been the only guy that I trust to build my kit from scratch. Mm. And he was up for the fucking task and was well enthusiastic about it. I was fucking like, jungle gym. The fucking jungle gym. So I was like, fair play, mate. You're into this. But Logan's just been. Not only are we, I mean, we're mates like outside of that, you know, the music world anyway, where we I'd consider us pals. He gets on with the rest of the guys in the band. A dream just to be around, you know what I mean? He's just a fucking easygoing guy and he knows his shit and he's enthusiastic as fuck and he's open to learn and he's always asking, like, do you need this? Do you want this? Can I do this? And like that to me was just going mm, above and yeah, beyond because I don't, I, I don't expect it as well. It's always like one of those things where I was like, you know, I, I, I don't have an ego, I don't carry myself for that. So I was just like, if you can just, you know, if we're doing a festival and I go out there and I stand up behind the kit and go, <laughs> can, can you plug my, <laughs> that, that's, yeah. see that when you when I fake mouth something at the yeah, start yeah, of yeah. a festival, that's the noise that I make. Go. Do you actually do that noise? No. no I was gonna say. I, well, we're doing a festival at the, at the weekend and I will do that now, but. Have you ever done it when, like, because I do a couple of screams in the set if I'm fucking feeling it. If you ever, if you ever do, fully screams, that's, that's sometimes me. I do a what fucking thing? less fucking go or like a scream, and a couple Ooh. of times I've pulled muscles doing it and fucked the rest of the set up. Like, I've pulled all up my side. Fucking hell. Idiot. I've never, I mean, but you're falling to bits. We'll come back to that again. I feel like we've started many different topics here. <laughs> fucking we'll, slag. We'll come, <laughs> I mean, you're falling to bits. I'm actually on the mend. Okay, number one, I'm on the mend. Good. Okay, I'm on my drum tech story. So, yeah, Josh yeah, wanted, wanted just, shout out Logan. There we go. Shout out Josh. Josh wanted to stay um, on the tour. So I said, okay, yeah, you can be my drum tech. And then on day, the first day of being my drum tech, it wasn't really like it was my drum tech. So I just went up to him nicely. It was just like, in my head, I knew like, I'm going to pay this guy at the end. So I, there's flies in here. I don't know why there's a fucking body somewhere. I've left another body around. Um, Dro I Dropping wee ham and eggers in here. I basically <laughs> said, do you want to be a drum tech as your job? And he was like, yeah. And I said, well, what, he, here's what we'll do. I will tell you everything I'm, that I expect you to do. Like, and then if it's too much, you can just let me know and then you don't have to do it. But if you want to learn how to do it and you've never done it before, I will tell you everything I would do and everything I would expect. Told him it all. And then on day fucking two, it was, he, he it was it. absolutely perfect for the rest Amazing. of the tour. That's that willingness to learn. It that's that openness. Incredible. And that's just, I think if you're going to be in a tech or any fucking member of the touring crew, that is so fucking crucial because that changes from uh, band to band, client to client, essentially. And I think you need to have that. And then that plays nicely into the don't be a dick thing because you can have an ego and you can be a bit of an arsehole and you can rub people up the wrong way. But if the people that are paying you, you're open to playing by their rules all the time and you're learning, that's fucking crucial. I got told off once, one big telling off from architects when I was drum checking. Just for fucking getting fucked up, like really fucked up. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's the fourth one. Don't get too fucked. Yeah, it's a big one. But I also made a lot of good connections. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there was one night where I was just yeah. like, I was walking back to the fucking bus like a T-Rex like I was fucked up yeah I was fucking yeah there was uh, something else involved and then at that point I think the next day they made me drum tech in a, a Borat Mankini for the actual show as a punishment and I, I quickly don't so my number one is the part is basically if I'm buying a, if I'm paying for a tech so Gabe's now my tech because he's already on the tour doing photos so right. I just pay him um, so there's different levels really all I want is not to load out my drums to be set up my drums to be packed down and my drums to be loaded out like I don't care really about the tuning because I can sit on a drum kit and just go bish bash bosh yeah. like, if I'm paying big big money but I just chuck Gabe a bit see I, I took full advantage of Logan on the last Bleed From Within headline tour and I, I was terrible for loading in and loading out I, um, I, I made a cunt of it and I was like I felt like a total arsehole on the second last night I think it was Davey or something Kenny said you do realise you've been dropping the ball here and you've not been loading in loading out and I was like oh no yeah, but you paying also, because we, still, well, we were paying them but it's kind of we are very we're all we're all hands on in that sense and it was nope. kind of like everyone else nope. was doing their nope. bit nope. 
The, not the, if you're paying. The, not if you're paying. Yeah, but I mean, Logan was more of a, a hand for the band. Do they have a guitar a tech. tech? No, no, no. See, that's it. Yeah, see, that's why. So what you need is a guitar tech. Yeah, exactly. So I was kind of drum I, I tech. Just took, I took the easy way out on that, and it, it wasn't a, it wasn't something that I was consciously doing. I was working and stuff during the day, and I was busy, and I'd come and be like, I did a couple of loadings, but loadouts. For example, in London, I ran to the bar and I was meeting with the label and I was chatting to folk and missed the loadout and I was a bit of a dick. So I, in that sense, I took advantage of poor wee Logan. Well, here's a sort of good idea that we could do. Number one, I'm going to say this right now on the podcast. Thank you for doing this because I always forget to thank people and this is a, a fucking a first on the downbeat. It's going to be a big episode, the video and everything. Fucking it's cool as fuck. Ten years overdue. Um, but we can use the power of the downbeat because... I'm sure there's people that listen to the podcast that are drummers. I can think of one off the top of my head and I don't want to name drop him right now. But where you could say, look, if you want to learn how to be a drum tech, come on the tour, learn how to be a drum tech and I'll chuck you some money at the end. Don't make him do it for fucking free. Of but then course. that gives someone a job because since then, since doing Do you that remember tour, that band? The Josh, drummer? Jo- what? Do you remember that band? What band? There was a band that made t-shirts that got people to crew for them for free. Do you remember that? We're going to get into that. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anyway, sorry. You were... um, but Josh did, uh, straight after me, Car Bomb, and now he's drum tech in Sleep Token. It's like, he's now a drum tech. That's yeah. his fucking job. Amazing. So if someone comes and does If someone wants to reach out to me, we've literally just told you how to do a good job, so don't <coughs> fuck it up. Uh, so easy. There should be, though. There should be, like... I remember I turned some stuff down when I was trying to be a drum tech when I was only architect. That was a very brief tech. period of time, wasn't it? You were trying I, to do I that. I did like three years with architects and then right. it was like, I did one show with Tesseract and Tesseract expected a little bit more of me than architects and I was like, oh no. This, I teched for Jay once. feels like work. I drove the van and, and teched and I set up his kit. They were doing a show in uh, Donington. So I download, sorry. And I did Sonosphere probably the same summer. I, I think it was a different year. I could have sworn it was a different year. Maybe, oh, okay. maybe it was. Fuck knows. Jay, do let us know. Um, but I, I, we set up on the second stage. They played that. And then they had to go and do press. And I had to basically take Jay's kit down and move it to... They did like a second set on a smaller stage somewhere. Good old Foster milking more money out of Live Nation on your <laughs> I was just son. thinking about him, actually, yeah. Uh, but I, I had to set up the kit on the second stage. And Jay was a little bit like, like me, like yourself. We were very particular. And we were like... You know, I think he was kind of like, oh, shit, is it going to be set up right and uh, yeah, I set it up on that smaller stage and he came back from press and sat down and was like, you fucking nailed this. This is absolutely perfect. And he didn't move a thing. And that for me was a great moment. I'd only ever, I'd teched for Dan Wilden before just because I was at the same festival and I wanted, <laughs> I wanted like, like a- Big drum kits that you've been teching for. And I was like, well, I've got my own. I think it's kind of like, I've got the fucking, the best experience to start on that. Do you know what I mean? But uh, I, I think it was the, Knowing that I'd done that all right with Jay and then doing it all right with, with Dan and stuff as well. It's just it was just a nice feeling. It's just fucking great. Your it eyeball is, on this mixer here. It is, yeah, off. it's just I'm just checking. It is soul destroying though. Um if you do a shy job. Well no, just as a drummer. like if you're if you're in a band and your band's doing pretty good and then you go and drum tech, like there's only so if you do a full fucking tour, it's like, oh, that could be me. That could be fucking me. Yeah, true, true. I'm a... Uh, yeah, drum tech and days are behind me. That being said, though, if we were at a festival and you were there and you needed a hand, I would more than... I mean, I would. I, I like to call it tin tech now at this point. That's what I get. Oh, yeah. That's what I we get used to do that back in so, the day. So I'll be like, Reynolds, do you want a hand? I'll like. I'll get some videos from behind the kit on my iPhone or whatever and uh, I'll pass you a beer when you want the it. The other thing, oh, yeah. And then I'll be like, you can fucking pack it down yourself, but cheers for the yeah, backstage the pack pass. Down, the pack down. Do you know what? I had someone I'll, that will remain nameless uh, help me pack down once at a show. And I was like, and they were like, oh, do you want a hand of packing down? And I was like, oh, that's fucking really nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, they packed, and they were a drummer, and they packed every cymbal stand, like, into, you know, its tiniest no! form. No, I've got all my fucking memory locks and shit on there. Or they like, didn't, I didn't take the didn't No, move no, I didn't, I didn't, didn't have memory locks, but I, I just play straight stands. So all of my stands just go, boom, yeah, it gives straight me, in. It gives me the fear with the rack. When I, when I start just, to see people, like, Put the uh, loosening off and putting the boom arm in and then putting the thing down and I'm like no 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 no, no. <laughs> you don't understand <laughs> that's been ten years making that anyway I literally my arsehole just clenched from that just wow, yeah, gross 
Um, okay, so someone's going to drum tech for you now from that. Yeah, great. I look forward to receiving your message, whoever you may be. There's no real... I've got stuff in my head that I want to talk about, but I'll um, do it. Fucking... We'll do it off the cuff. What? Is it beer time yet? I, I'm fucking done. I'm waiting for you, so... Sorry about that. Ali's... Uh, Just made an arse his table. Uh, we had a little intermission. Can of Fuck's yeah. sake. An intermission while Ali spilt beer. Cheers, mate. Go, Imperial Sour it. called Pucker. And it will make you pucker. It's like a fucking fruit juice. Look at that sour face. Fucker, Can man. I get that face again? Can <laughs> you have a little sup I of that? Wait till I get another sip. Jesus Christ. Have a little sip of that and tell me how you feel. To be fair, it's not the worst. <laughs> that fucking face! It's very sour. Anyway, oi, Corey, oh. Corey Taylor shared one of your songs. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Big Corey. Get close to that fucking microphone, big please. CMFT. Yes. Corey motherfucking Taylor. How did that... Well, so... Yeah, go on. He, Tell me uh, what you know. I think we had... So, like, Stephen, our guitarist, looks, looks after the social media pages. And I think he noticed that his wife started following the page. And I think Corey Alicia. Taylor started... Uh, uh, yeah, Alicia. So, she started following. And then Corey started following before they posted this. Before he posted this. And uh, I think he kind of said, well, this is pretty cool. And we were like, holy shit, we're on the radar. That's great. And then... The phone went back in the pocket and then the fucking notifications started coming in and the phone was just going <laughs> We went from forty eight thousand followers on our band page to fifty four in the space of like a weekend. That's fucking sick. It was I mean, in terms of free press for a metal band, you don't get much better. I mean that than is the fucking best thing number you could one do, yeah. slipknot fucking posting your shit. So Because he doesn't really post that much either. All he posts about is vended. The last time he done it, I think, was Code Orange and look at what happened with them. Do you know what I mean? And he took them out on tour and stuff like that. So it was just great to see. Do you know what I mean? We we very we're, we're not the fucking cool metal band by any means, and now we're getting to a point where things are slowly starting to happen. Do you know what I mean? But that's been, we've been a band 17 years now. Do you know what I mean? Three years, fucking 20 years fucking doing this shit. So I mean this in the nicest possible way. I've got two things to say, actually. Number one, newest newest guy in the band is trusted with all the socials. Stephen lives for it. It's great. And we trust him. How long has he been in the band? It's, it's weird that he is, I don't even know. It honestly feels like the lineup that we have now is the one that we've been striving for. Is that the last the two records? Three. Last three. So Shrine, the Fracture, and Era are all Stephen. Yeah, then. Those three are fucking good. And that that's like, when the band started in most yeah. people's eyes. You know I mean, we did one when we had Martin Evans uh, on guitar back in 2013. Fuck me, I forgot about that. Yeah, Martin was... Shout out mine. Shout out fucking wee Marty B. Who uh, is Architects Guitar Tech, if anyone doesn't know. I said Marty B there. He's actually Martin Brandon Evans, so Marty B. Martin, there MBE. Has he, has he got one? <laughs> Doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Marty. Um, um, but yeah, I, basically the band started and came back with those albums. And it's been those three or three albums since 2018. That's been the lineup. That's been the fucking, the inspiring fucking lineup that we've wanted for ages. And everyone's got their job and their fucking, their part to play, you know? And Snev's is, uh, Steven, sorry. Snev. Snev. It's just. Okay. Yeah. The, the daft name in the band. But, um, yeah, his, his thing is social media and he, he loves it. Do you know what I mean? You have to have somebody who is willing to be, you know, I can't be on my phone more than I ought to with the job that I have and just managing the band and just in general, I'm constantly on the phone. If I had to manage the social media accounts, it would blow my fucking mind wide mm. open. You know, as you doing your Twitch stuff and that, it's like you spend so much time on social media and it's, I mean, that is your job right enough, but I think it just drains me. Do you know what I mean? I find it hard to, to keep up and to do. Yeah, but I'm not doing anything else. Uh, I'm true. doing, I'm bothering yeah. people at allotment for the downbeat <laughs> and I'm doing the social media yeah. and then the band is like, we just tour. We just tour. Do tours yeah, and so we do I guess, records. I guess there's levels to it and stuff, but yeah. So I, Snev's just, I, he really took it over. I was doing it for ages and then eventually it was just kind of like, he was always giving great suggestions about captions and he was like, oh, what time are we doing this? What time? And I was like, I got to that point where I started delegating more things and I used to be so much more of a micromanager than I'm now. I probably still do that. If you ask any of the guys, they probably still say that I do things that annoy them or whatever. But 
I think like being able to just know that he's got that covered and when it comes to visuals of Gunzi's making something for a video wall, I don't even fucking look half the time. I'm like, I know that's gonna look amazing. You know, he does all the visuals for Bring Me and stuff. Fuck, and yeah, he's a fucking So you know genius. he's got it down. And when it, even when it comes to writing songs now, like if Kendy's got an idea or whatever's going on there or if Davey's doing artwork for the album, it's just like, I know all this stuff's just gonna look fucking great. And I almost distance myself from just being like, just, just leave it to be what it is. Because ultimately, even if you think there's something not right about it, if the other four people in your band are happy with that, then you're like, right, okay, I trust your decision in this. And it's, you know, with time, it's always the right decision. I've learned that. So I feel like as well, it's it's more... Oh, just burp there. Uh, and again, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you wish you oh. had headphones on so you could hear that. <laughs> Did uh, I have some bass I on feel it? like the algorithm shit though, like, you know, like what you're saying about um, do it at this time and all that stuff. I feel like more and more, I know people love to hate on the algorithm and all that shit. Oh, my shit's getting crushed. But when you think of it, I had a friend that worked at Facebook and he basically told me all of the fucking ins and outs of the algorithm. And when you think of it as like business wise, it makes sense that it happens. So just use your fucking brain when you're posting stuff. So the stuff that he told me, which was fucking valuable, which I will give to this podcast and fucking, to you yeah, sure because because I don't give a fuck. Like the competition shit is like, who gives a fuck? So number one thing not to do is to outside link. Oh yeah, in, that's in in the that's a comment. No go. Yeah. So because I know when you think of it from a business, it's taking people away from that web, website, yeah. which means the adverts get seen less. So it makes sense. It sucks, but it makes sense. So number two is text in the actual image because obviously they can scan for that even yeah, if there's, if there's a the website the yeah, 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 yeah. there's you a website in there now stuff like link in bio is in there so in the caption if you write link in bio it kills it, it yeah because it's really? again yeah because they're just they're just clever they just went well that's taking people away from the site but what overrides all of these things is like and you know when people are going mad for the oh sharing is worth 10 uh, likes and all that shit that someone just fucking made up yeah. that's bullshit yeah, yeah the reason a saved video does better is because it is better because if if it's a type of video that people are going to save it's the type of video that people are going to share and that's naturally going I've got, to do I've better i've got some mental stats on a bleed from within one that was done recently and we, we've started to notice this with videos that snev's been posting and Every now and again, he would just screenshot like a, a caption. So it seems to be some of the stuff that Gunzi and him have shot recently, just because gunzi has got a decent camera. He's got one of those, you know, the rails that, Ooh, yeah. you, know, you know, those things. And it tracks Next. them. Uh, it tracks them as they're, as they're playing. So it's constantly in focus. Kind oh, of thing. fuck. I'm pretty that's sure that's what happens with the top and shade, but I'll get these. I mean, you just pick now. a focus point and then it fucking moves around. Uh, right, let me see if I can get these, get these stats right. We might be, uh, might be cutting here as I find. No, no picture. cut. I've already got to do so many cuts. You look really... I'm looking at you at the monitor. You look really nice. Really handsome. Oh. Hair looks good. Fucking hell. That's that's a rare occasion, by the way. This bloody mane. That I've got you ever thought about just cutting it off? For charity? I did consider it at one point. Um, what's the figure? Well, I would just open it up. It would just be... Yeah, but well, you must, there must be a cap on it. You ain't doing it for fucking 200 quid. I'll give you well, 200 quid exactly. right now I would, now I would just leave it an open-ended fucking thing or whatever or, I don't oh, know imagine that you'd probably get a lot what would you do well, shave I made, it I made fucking 500 quid when I done Sober October because nobody could believe that nobody believed that I could do you made it or you did it for charity I made it, I, oh, made no, it no, for no, I didn't do it for myself <laughs> the charity of me so I could go on one massive night out after a sober month <laughs> no it was the Macmillan um, <laughs> Macmillan thing like the official Sober October um, sorry I'm still trying to find this image here I've, I've ended up on I've, it's one thing I've realised about being sober is that I just can't fucking do it. I can't do it. What? I can't do being it. Being sober? What, yeah, what you so, when, when were you sober? Well, I tried to a couple of times. I tried to have a sober week this week and I got exactly 26 hours into it and I had a beer. I just can't do it. It's my anti-anxiety medication. See, I, I am, I'm, I'm definitely like, I'm the worst person to talk about <coughs> depression and anxiety. And I mean, anxiety doesn't really affect me. I think it's more depression, but I think the the alcohol side of things is just that's where I run to straight away and it's mm. such it's such an easy coping mechanism it's at every fucking shop you've got mates that fucking love doing it 
and you know you've built a reputation over the last however many years of getting fucked you up you have just, you, you are, exactly there's you're the, stories you're the person about that, you and if you get really low you into. just know you can text your mates and be like let's go and get fucked up and nobody's gonna bat an eyelid so you know i mean i felt that throughout lockdown i think you've you've touched on this stuff before and we've touched a bit on it and yeah I've, oh I've, my alcoholism really kicked in i was good until lockdown happened and then now it's like I'm still trying to find this video. I'm so sorry. This is I, I'm giving ages. up. We're talking about something else. I don't give a fuck. You, we can still talk as long as you find the video while we're talking. Then I, it doesn't really matter. I need to find... Right, I know who I sent it to. I sent it to him. Like, let's get this done and out the way, right? This is this will be one of the recent ones. I can't even remember what we're supposed to be talking about. What the video... Oh, oh you know ble what? A bleed video. I, I lost my phone, so I've, I've lost recent things that were sent. It was just a bleed from within video that reached like one and a half million accounts. It just went viral off... And I'm not. We're not even sure why. Do you know what I mean? It was wasn't. It, it wasn't a real. It wasn't a it wasn't real. real. Yeah, that's the. Uh, it was just a video. The reels thing switched because they did what happened to try and beat TikTok is they put in a creator fund into Instagram, which they were paying people for reels, not me, right, but they okay. were paying some people, and so they were pushing reels like fuck, and then the creator fund ran out of money and they stopped pushing the reels but i did i started doing reels like that shit. Have, are that. you still doing reels at the moment no because they started performing worse than the videos i guess because i've noticed that i think well. instagram realized tiktok's here to stay it was like when instagram stole stories off of snapchat oh yeah. they basically killed snapchat and they so thought they, they could thought do it they could do it with tiktok and then they were like obviously not going to work big, let's continue yeah. let's go because then Instagram brought back being able I think you can see it in chronological order or whatever because they they know that TikTok is now a different thing yeah and I don't like the TikTokification nice TikTokification TikTokification of, of Instagram great word because like when I'm scrolling down my Instagram it's like everything is <laughs> what, what when you get caught on the real feed oh and it just it's stays just it, nonsense until you like it's, it or this, say you don't like what, it I'm going back to like you know, Snev doing his job and, and loving fucking social media and being able to do that because I just don't have the patience. I still don't have TikTok. I don't have a TikTok account. I'm not, I, I just can't. I, f I feel old now. You know what I mean? I'm fucking 33 and I'm like, mm. I need to get a new app and get used to how to use this. And I, I got one and I started using it and I got two videos big viral and they both got deleted because TikTok is like, oh, no, you can't possibly put that on there. I had a cool video, which I later saw some big famous TikTok person did about a year after me. I had a cool video where I said, it was basically, I was doing a bit, I'll reenact it right now. Doing a bit of a person going, yeah. The vaccine? Yeah, the vaccine. They were like, oh, yeah, pa a microchip in there. Yeah, I can't believe Yeah, you won't catch me putting that in my body. And then I leant down and did a big fat fucking line of coke. Yep. And <laughs> and then it got deleted. It, it like popped off and then it got deleted. Well, drug paraphernalia. And then I saw some girl fucking did it. I saw a few of them. I'm pretty sure that was... I like was a... the instigator of that fucking joke. Motherfuckers. But I don't care. I've still got it. Yeah. And, then, and then the other thing that it doesn't... It's not conducive for my stuff i thought okay all of the funny shit i do on tiktok when i'm playing the drums i'll do like i'm um, when i like blast beat over fucking Nicki minaj and stuff like that i'll put all that on tiktok but because of tiktok's history with copyright the copyright stuff when it's so bad they just take the video down straight away uh so i can't do anything on there so i'm like i don't care yeah I, I don't i don't get it as as an app really i mean i obviously understand i understand it and i, I guess i understand its potential and stuff but it's just getting used to something new it's it's not for me unless you know I, I reckon at some point Stephen's gonna tell me or tell us you know that let's, we've got a plan for this we should all be sharing this hashtag this just put that stuff up there if you're sharing it from there just share it from that platform just keep oh, it easy keep it simple that's another one that's another thing uh that Twitter's my, another one mate I don't fucking me. use oh, I love Twitter addicted to it no another thing my mate said um don't share the same piece of content from multiple accounts because the algorithm squishes the fuck out of it it knows that yeah because 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 people are stealing other people's viral videos and putting them up and then getting more views so you have to make so a separate piece of content that. for each yeah. platform yeah or so or, or what we do it's is a edit. we do yeah do a different edit or what we do is share different if if we've got a single coming out everyone shares a different photo and it, it doesn't pick it up 
Um, and the other thing is, don't edit if you're going to edit a photo, or if you're going to edit the caption. Try not fuck this on the table this time. I can see you're pouring it at a crazy angle. There you go. Well, this is what you're meant to do, mate. Um, Clearly not, actually. After the first. If time. you're editing, if you need to edit the caption. Don't edit a caption more than one minute after you've done it. Either delete the post and redo it or... Does that affect it that much? Yeah, because if you think about it, you could post a caption that gets everyone engaged, which then pushes it to every single person's platform because everyone's liking it and everyone's mm. doing it. And then you could change that caption to either an advert or a fucking Nazi fucking thing or whatever. And that's still the algorithm still pushing that. So what happens when Fair you off. edit a post is it it brings all engagement back down to zero. Do you not think it's mental, though, in this day and age, to be in a band or be a creator? Like, these are the things that you have to know. There's Let so me many tell you about fucking... the three fucking cameras in here <laughs> so I can continue to have a job. Yeah, the effort was pretty big. You started setting up at five o'clock today, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So but you can, like so when you can it works, I love it. I love this. I love the fact this will be immortalized on the internet forever. Our lovely little chat, our little hangout. I love like making the quality better than other people, just because I think you love that. No, yeah, but one not, up on someone. Not, no, not even one upping. Just like the technology exists to do this. Why doesn't everyone's fucking podcast look like Christopher Nolan made it? Like, why wouldn't you fucking they don't do have that? A successful clothing brand, Craig. That's what's going on. This was all credit card purchase. Sorry, I'll rephrase it. They can't pay off the credit cards. <laughs> true. True, true. But it was during the but pandemic. Yeah, I mean, it was the Patreon. Shout out the Patreon. It's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all an investment piece. I get it. It's, it's like a band. And it's, just, it's the same shit. You throw money at your band. I don't, think I'm, I don't think I'll recoup on the, the all of this technology. Yeah. I don't... Ah, Twitch will make it recoup. But for the podcast, it won't recoup. But the podcast is what brings people to the clothing. And it's what brings people to me. And it's the look. It, it's yeah. but sometimes it is annoying, like to get out of to, to. It's almost like having to drag yourself to work for something that isn't technically making well, it, you it money goes, right then. It goes back to what I was saying because I remember chatting to you about streaming and chatting about Twitch and stuff, and that's something that I'd kind of toyed with the idea of. And I went through phases of making loads of content and filming myself on a GoPro and re multi-track recording stuff and doing a little mix and making clips for Instagram being like I'll post this one get Monday, close this to the one. mic please sorry this sorry uh, yeah so doing this on I'll, I'll post this one on Monday post this one on Wednesday post this on Friday and try and pick the best times look at the insights and I went through a period of doing that and then streaming became the thing during lockdown and I was like I don't even know where to start and part of me just thought you should just fucking start with nothing and just see where it takes you kind of thing don't look at me was that a dog? No, no, it was me. It was me, it was me kicking something. Um, but yeah, yeah, but like, was this when you had a drum room when you didn't? That's when I had the drum room at allotment. So like, well, you should have done I, that. I, can, I considered streaming and got it, but like, you're right. Like, I think the investment to take up, I guess this leads on to another point, which is about the, the edited videos and stuff that we fucking despise mm. and that I'm massively you're going against. There. And you're going there, I'm worried. Well, we, it leads into this because you started to see like, you know, especially during lockdown where I, I was still able to access a drum room, which I thought was great. And I did a few of these like Insta jam things. I wasn't the first, I stole the idea off Eloy. Mm. And, uh, but you know, it was great engagement and stuff. And everyone was like, this is such a cool thing to do because we're all fucking locked in the house. So I started doing that. And then I was toying with the idea of twitching, uh, twitching, Twitch streaming. And I was twitching like- Twitching is an adjective. You can say it? twitching. Do you yeah. call it twitching? Yeah, you can call I it twitching. I thought it just meant I was twitching because I was fucking wrecked every day. No, so. I think you can call it that. I don't think I have, but I think people do. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. I was a slip of the tongue. But um, yeah, so like, I don't know. I think, uh, so I guess reasons why you wouldn't go into that is because other people's content is potentially so much better than yours. And I think that's a general feeling for maybe a lot of folk. Do you know what I mean? And I think- you know, maybe your playing isn't as good. That's one thing, but maybe it's just the apps, the the quality of that content just isn't as great. And then you look at the way that the the Twitch side of things leads directly into it feeds nicely into YouTube, which is great. Like you do, so you do your playthroughs live or whatever on yeah. the stream, and then you can cut it and you can get it on YouTube as a standalone video, which is fucking great. One thing feeds the other, and it's perfect. But that if, only but works, not, by the way, if you don't edit your drums. Well, exactly. Otherwise, you're fucked. But very, very obvious. As a as a concept. It's fucking perfect because I d you kill two birds with one stone. I'm doing a stream, which potentially, hopefully, makes me some money. And then 
It goes I, on YouTube, which record, will make which, money over Yeah, time. but the thing with the YouTube, if I was making, I shout out to anyone who's like a real YouTube content creator. We should because discuss some good YouTube jumps. The amount of well. fucking like money that you get. If I was setting up all these fucking cameras, like I do this uh, because I love it. The podcast, I love it. But yeah. like setting up all the shit to record a drum cover to then get 30 bucks is like it's yeah. crazy well, I told you about the one that I did so um, I, I did like a bleed from within drum cam from Bloodstock last year and it's like the full 40, 40, 45 minute set and uh, because our sound guy mixed it with vocals and mixed it so well Sony actually our old record label actually picked it up and flagged each song so I couldn't monetize the drum cam and I was like bastard that algorithm is clever as fuck at the moment because they can tell the chord progressions now so it comes up is this a cover song and then you end up it's kind of cool you you need to dispute it though don't you you need to say well this is different to the the actual version so if you mix it very drum heavy then you can get away with it saying it's for educational purposes and you can actually it's, monetize yeah, it it's, yeah it's but sometimes they'll pick it up and then they'll go oh he's obviously doing a cover and then they split the money so you get half and the, whoever wrote it got half so it's weird it's so if i didn't have the clothing line i wouldn't do any of this because the clothing line actually gives me money yeah that's and all of these other the things the, the people bits. get into my brand cringe or like or just, or just like fucking wanting to support me or whatever and then they buy a t-shirt and then that gives me money thank you um but if i was doing all, like all of this work it's a lot five hours today to make this like i love it obviously i love it i love having the chat i love talking about drums or whatever yeah but like it's such a hard graft for like my my youtube and i i probably post three videos a week my but yours U is taking you're doing the same thing we were talking about you're taking it from twitch and you're getting the videos right which is yeah which is the right way to do it in, in my eyes if you're going to do it because i've tried or i've looked explored the idea of doing youtube and i bought i, I recently just sold the camera back to my dad today as i came back to glasgow i bought it about fucking three or four years ago and i bought a little gimbal arm and i was like right i'm gonna I actually documented my time at the manchester drum show when i done a clinic there i filmed the entire thing just didn't even but like i did that i filmed uh, i filmed my rehearsal process my all that sort of shit and i was going to do a little series of videos building up to it and when i looked at all the footage i was like i cannot be fucked and, and also, i don't even have the time and i was like what is the return off this other than is it self-gratification is it an ego thing am i just feeding my own ego being like do people actually want to see this no nah, well, just do it for free on instagram as you go on the stories or you know exactly and what i what i did a couple of times was i thought you know what? i'm gonna make a fucking hard pass i'm gonna fucking go for YouTube, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do day in the life and all this shit. And I did like a walkthrough of my entire studio setup for streaming, which is fucking valuable right. information. Like the one in yeah. yeah. The what, like how I do it, two computers, the cameras, all of the shit. And I did it and it took fucking ages to do because you have to. This is my, my, I'm like, I'm an analog digital guy. Like, as you saw earlier, I plugged this into this. So I plugged my audio into my video. So I'm getting a hard bake video. So I, my editing is Hard bake. That was a word is, I'd never is, fucking heard. Is what? Well, as in the audio is baked into the video that I've got. So yeah. I don't have to do any fucking editing later on. So when I have to do anything like that, like extra fucking work. So doing my walkthrough, play through, uh, my walkthrough of my studio putting a little fucking card in the camera and then char making sure the battery's charged and then filming all the shit and then making sure that the shot is and then, oh, this shot's wobbly, so I'll put some image st stabilization and all that shit and doing all of that fucking shit. And then you put it on the internet and it's like valuable fucking information that when I was starting, I would have paid someone... Five hundred yeah. pounds to tell me. I know if I ever got gets, into it, you'd be the. I'd I'd come straight to you if I ever started. And I'd tell I, I'd tell you. I wouldn't tell fucking anyone. But to do all yeah. that and then get fucking literally, I got twelve dollars from that video. And so I deleted it. I deleted the video. It's like that information is worth point? far more than twelve dollars. I'm not putting it out there for free for some fucking enemy to to use. But it's it's a it's a graft, Ooh. and it's the stuff. And it's, it's respect to anyone that does it. I mean, everything that you do with your stuff, I've, I've always respected. I think what you've made out of 
yourself essentially and the idea for the downbeat i remember like we spoke about it earlier when you first started this podcast and you had an idea and i remember the stickergram thing and i was like that's pretty cool and like to think about where you've that's a right trademark now yeah there you go because some that cunt was, tried that was, to that was fucking it. cheap but um like yeah i think like anyone that does it and you know i respect your ability and drive to just do what you've done and make something out of that but then you know I, oh I it's running it, out i think this is <laughs> i don't get me wrong dry. i'm is that fucking a to the patreon to go fucking whoop no but the page the patreon is it's like the it's going is, is the reason i spent five hours to set yeah. this up because the patreon is like now it's, it's only one pound but there's so many people on it it's like it's good money it's paying for the room and it pays like a little bit of my mortgage so it's fucking amazing yeah so you know, and then that's the way it should go and i think like going on to what i was saying there i think that should apply to that's what i hope happens to the really good youtube drummers that you know who you got you were you alluded to this who's your who's your youtube troy fucking right who troy fucking yeah but he's right. a real drummer isn't he he's a fucking real drummer i mean i don't i mean when i talk about youtube drummers i'm just thinking of straight away i think of troy right i think of his medleys the most insane fucking those mishugga medleys oh my god mm. The amount, of, if I'm smashed at someone's house somewhere and they're like, do you want to put something on YouTube? And they're listening to like, <laughs> I don't know, fucking like Martin Garrix or some fucking Calvin Harris. I'm like, give me that fucking remote. I'm like, watch this And you fucking, put a fucking Troy Wright plagiar on at a house party and everyone's fucking... Troy Wright Meshuggah right, medley. Everyone's ga this? gacked out their tits and you're putting on... <laughs> yeah, they don't even know. <laughs> it's jarring drum beats. They're like, oh, is this Apex Twin? And you're like, fucking shut up. <laughs> but yeah, it's... I, Honestly, I, I could watch his videos all day. Uh, I think Krim is a fucking great. But these are real drummers. These but, aren't no, no, but he, Krim's like YouTube as fuck because he does like a day in the life and a day on tour. And actually, a, a video that Krim made inspired me for a recent purchase where I bought a a, a Pele case, a one six. Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it, and I'm doing it. <laughs> it fucking works. So you can put your pedals in a soft case and your fourteen by six and a half snare drum in a soft case. And I have all the extra clamps that I need. Like, I need an extra hi-hat one. I've got a little one for offset toms. I've got uh, fucking something else. I've got sticks. I got given 200 cigarettes in Czech Republic recently. They live in there. It holds my reflex pads. It all lives in this one fucking flight case. And it weighs 27 kilos. Fly, le legally can fly it. And I'm like, yeah, if oh you my ain't God. got a bell brass. Well, that's why you need to get yourself a Yamaha one that weighs the same as a paperweight. When I put the fucking pedal reference in there... For, it's the reference. same weight as a bell brass. Pretty much. Aye. And the the, the bag went from 26.5 to 31. <laughs> it's like... 31 you shit. can still do though, can't you? Yeah, 32 is legal. Aye. Goes up to 32. Oh, that's good. What's the... What's the... I mean, it's not a plug because Pelly ain't giving us shit for free, but... No, please, they're not. Please give a shit for free. Yeah, it's, it's a Pele case 1615, but 615. it's the Pele air you have to get because those because, they yeah, weigh fucking nothing. I've got a normal Pele for the podcast but stuff. Shout out to Krim because it was, I literally watched one of his videos because I've seen him at fests set up his shit before and there's like nothing there. He's just got like a little bag. And He's just, never I mean, he got puts, a drum tech as well. Never got a fucking tech. So I was kind of curious to see how does he do all the fly shows. And I saw him like, you know, the video starts with him just standing with his bag on and a cymbal case and a fucking flight case. And I was looking at myself, you know, going like juggling all oh, the bags. Mate, I reckon that's why my back's fucked other than breaking it. <laughs> <laughs> other than falling from a height my, my, onto uh, said back. My original back. My original back. <laughs> Your back original being, back? The first my one? My original back T1? being fucked. <laughs> was, from, was from fucking... I used to... Fuck me. I used to, I was in a band. It's crazy what you do for like the love of it God. when you're a kid. Yeah, yeah we can and, go on in this. And then hell. you like, then, so I used to go from Reading to Newbury, which is, you know, it's a fucking, it's probably a 40 minute, nah, 35 minute train. But I would go with snare cymbals pedals to go to band practice. And the, where we practiced was so far away from the station that I would walk with snare cymbals pedals like symbols on a symbol bag like over my shoulder I, used to, I had to get my mum or dad to drive me and it was taxis i would Kinder. walk just fucking well, you're a fucking numpty bad you? badly loaded walk all the way to the practice That's room and then mental. do a full practice and then was this my no this was i, I used to play in a band called drivers against like a punk band and then Liu Kang, like just hardcore bands back in the day this is like 2003 um and I would just do it and I would just fucking love it. I just love everything about it. Now you try and get, and I fucking love playing the drums, right? But yeah. now well, you try and get me to do, to do that. 
I think that's what, that's what drove me to be like, fuck you, pay me now. Like, <laughs> drummers do the most shit for the least amount of money and the least Wait, amount of glory. You get paid? For what? <laughs> you get... <laughs> what? Come on. Somebody's fucking paying you? You getting on? <laughs> no, we... Uh... Yeah, I think, um, like you said, the love of the craft and putting ourselves through that. And I remember, like, the early shows for me were, like, snares and Tesco bags and stuff. Like, I used to take... What I the used, fuck? I used, snares in a Tesco bag? I used a to snare take, in a Tesco get, bag? Get this. I used to take my pedal export snare. Like, you know, the one that comes with the kit? I used to be like, wait, wait, that's wait, the greatest wait, 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 wait. What era? Is this when it came with a steel snare or when it no, came no, no, with the one with that the matched the kit? One, yeah, like when it came with the actual... Wooden. With a, Sorry. Yeah, wed- wedding in a fucking, a fucking plastic bag snare. in a plastic bag I had a it was an Ikea bag and I used to have that in there and I'd put in like a towel change of clothes and whatever else because I've always been a sweaty cunt and uh, yeah and then I used to have a hold all like just a just a big duffel bag basically with extra cymbal stands because every studio we'd practice in had three stands and even from day one I was a fucking cymbal loving cunt and I had yeah just a, a silly set I remember we played with you in like fucking 2009 well, but, but the first gig do you remember our first gig together was it Eddie's was that our first or did we know each nah, other there was, a, there was another there was another little weird one Oh, it was little, definitely weird. Little was weird it venue. Was it, it wasn't Hull Metal Fest, was it? No, no, it was a small, really? small venue. Small venue. And we did one show together and it must mm. have been 2009. And did you just take one look at me and go, what's that cunt doing with all those symbols? No, but then you fucking ripped it. But it was like, how old are you now? 33. You were 33. So it was, when we were at that age, how weird is this? So what age are you? I'm 35. Right. But Old there's, a, there, there's a no, but you're 33 and 35 are the same fucking age, <laughs> yeah. right? But, but this what? is my point. This is my point. When you're a, when you're like, I must have been 18, so you must have been 16. So right. at the time, it was like, man, this kid fucking shreds. And then now it's like, I'm two years older than you. <laughs> and now you're now you're looking at me like fucking. I know why your kid went from viatrophy to just. Yeah, fuck that shit. And now you're looking at me and you're like, Ali, you can't be our setting up your kit. Do you want to know why? All right. A million symbols, mate. I, st- I can't, I got nothing and I can't be asked to set my fucking drum kit up. Yeah. My, I need a tech because my fucking back, though. We're talking about my back being fucked. Oh, you get medical fucked. reasons now? Jesus. Yeah, but I have to pay out my own money. The band doesn't pay. Yeah. We, bro- we don't know. Everyone's always kind of accepted and bleed from within. And uh, I guess, it's, 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 it's not so much, but we hardly ever tour. Um, everyone's accepted and bleed from within like if we get any member of the crew it'll be a drum tech first for Ali and I think they've kind of that's what we've done but that drum tech will always be a hand on stage I think that makes the most sense and there's so many bands that don't do it they do a guitar tech first the drum the drummer needs the help every fucking day it's fucking crazy and even if it's like you know like I said I kind of abused my privileges on the last headline run but I think like having a tech on this European run, the person who's going to message me after this fucking podcast. Honestly, um, that's that going to happen. Will, that'll be like, uh, just having someone to help is what I want to, and that, that's what Logan kind of realised as well. When I, I'm always there to kind of, I'll come and maybe help at the end of the setup or I'll help take some stuff down and get stuff in the certain bags or whatever and help load out and load in. And it's kind of like, I don't want someone to do everything for me. I don't want fucking spoon fed. That's never really been me. To be honest, I think my OCD doesn't even really allow it, you know? But to have a wait, 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 wait. You uh, you do some shit still when you have a drum tank. Yeah. What do you do? And how much are you pay in the drum tank? Oh just I mean an example is setting up the rack, always. I'll just I'll help Logan even when he was there and even if he didn't want me to do it and I know he's more than capable, I'll <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no, wait. If I'm paying, no. do everything for me, but please. Just, if anything, I just get to talk to him about the drums and just be like, Oh well, I hope this fucking stays like this and oh we got this angle right and that's looking good. And I just get to geek out for a bit with somebody that actually gives a shit because if I try and talk to any other member of the band, they're like, Ali, no one gives a fuck, mate. So I enjoy, I enjoy that little geeky time with uh, whoever's taking Okay, so this is where we differ, and this is what we can talk about. We go on to a segue right. about that. This is the chunks that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the thing that I want to talk about right now. <laughs> right? Right. What are you laughing at? <laughs> we're going to talk about what I want to talk what about. What I want to talk about. This is my fucking podcast. <laughs> right? We're going to talk about what, the fucking guess. what I'm going to talk about. Then we're going to talk about silosis and bleed from within. Right? Combined. Okay. We'll just um, we'll talk about Solosis and then we're gonna talk about the new album, recording the new album, and then we're gonna do your dream festival. So you're here for another fucking hour. It's a long episode. Well, as long as you can. I've got so many fucking cans. 
Okay, so what I wanted to talk about just fucking then was my... So what do you do on tour? Like, the reason I love a tech, other than the fact that it's not like, I can deadlift, I can do this, I can do that, my back doesn't hurt. See the minute, that's me being Scottish now, see the fucking minute. See the, the, minute, the minute I... The minute I have to, like, tighten something like this, or load something in like that, or put a drum like that, like an awkward load, my back just goes, nope, fucked up. Like, like I said earlier, you need it for medical reasons. I don't, none of that shit bothers but me. But you the, the were prim- like- The primary reason for a tech for me is making sure nothing fucking falls over during like mid gig. That's the main thing. Like if something That's fucks- your primary reason. That's my least thing. I, I mean, can pick that up. You've got fucking I mean, a million symbols. Oh, China 3 fucking fell Obviously. Over. Oh, no. Maybe I could play China 2 instead. <laughs> but you, you can't be playing China 2 in the battles on China 1, do you know what I mean? You can't be saying that. What if Splash 1 goes? You can't be riding it on Splash 2. <laughs> <laughs> the muscle memory. Although, exactly. when the muscle memory goes, goes... You go, oh, my God. In some of the fills I've got now, I'm like, are you kidding me on? Like, this can't be happening. When that symbol just goes... Ew. My my favourite yeah, thing on earth is like... It's obviously... Just to go back to your point, it's obviously fucking setting up and taking down. I mean, that's the dream. And the main one is taking down, especially if you're headlining. If you, I mean, I would... I, 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 I tech and I support tours a bit of a fucking blag, but if you're headlining and you come off that stage after... <laughs> I'm about to go on <laughs> a te- t- <laughs> Yeah, fuck yeah, I do. Like, you're... I mean, you I need mean, it now, right? Because you're you're an old fuck and you're no, falling to bits. Has bleed has bleed, and this is not like a slight or anything. Has bleed done America? No, no, we've never right. done states. So that will definitely happen at some point. But yeah. America does it so differently. Everyone has techs. Everyone in every fucking band has techs. Everyone and the techs in America, they do it fucking cheap. They've got do a it. guy, a guy that makes the tea for the guy that makes the coffee, kind of thing. They do, so they do like a fucking. Oh, it's fucking three hundred bucks a week. He's like, okay, I'll fucking give you that. Three hundred. Everyone a week. Everyone's for a got. Well, because when you add it up, it's four weeks. It's twelve hundred bucks. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> What? That's good. I'll pay that. I mean, it's all right, but to be away, fucking slumming it in the back of a fucking van or whatever for. I mean, that's yeah, I was unsure what you were, what side you were on there. But some people look at that twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, but you know, I'm on the side you, of pay them fucking more. If somebody was taking from my no, record, I'm, I would I'm not be fucking, giving somebody three hundred dollars a week. It's just different there, and all bands have have drum techs and like. But in the UK, for some weird reason, it's like. You just set your own it shit It seemed up. to be like something that you get at a certain point. And I get, you know, first of all, you have to be able to afford it. And we're finally getting to a stage where we can afford like an extra member of crew. And that just, we've all kind of agreed it would be a tech to help me, but then somebody that's there on stage to just... You, you know, just need a, a you need guy. a fucking, what you need is one of those fucking nerds who are like, I just want to fucking, and which I was, if you would have given me well, when the guys I was 16. The, little, the guys with the little vests. Like, when I was 16, if someone would have turned around and went, oh, you're on this tour as a drum tech, you're getting $1,200 a month, which is a lot of money if you're fucking, you don't have a fucking job that you don't, like, or you have a job that you fucking hate. 1200 bucks a month. Set up the drums, set up all the guitars, do all the loading in, do all the loading out. Like, I would have fucking done it. I'm not going to take advantage of people like that. But back to your point about the 1200 bucks not being enough. It's but not I enough. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's not, not but enough. It, 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 but I just I would it, expect it to be more. But it comes out of the drummer's pocket. Oh, that changes so, it. I mean, yeah. it's a personal so thing then. It's yeah. like, I don't know if it's different UK slash America. You pay for your own tech out of your money, in my experience anyway. So it's like... Yeah, we would have to make money taking, for, for that. Yeah, to, uh, me taking 1200 bucks out of my uh, out of my monthly, mm. plus like the amount of day passes at the gym that I use and stuff. Like, I'll last two I fucking broke even. <laughs> but it's like... <laughs> I loved it. It was great fun. And I had much more. It was almost like I was on vacation because I had so much fun because I had that drum tech. So it was like I came yeah. home and I was like, well, didn't make any money, but you it was sick. You had a great fucking time. I had a great time. And you know what? Because of that, I was I came home recharged. And then when I worked on the downbeat you and don't my merch the, shit, the, you don't which need the makes two days. me money. You don't need the two days, which used to be because traveling has fucked me now post, post-COVID. I used to be able to go I used to work in a bar I used to do like a bar and a car wash and used to do random fucking cash and hand jobs here there and everywhere just to support the band um, and allow myself to tour but when I used to come back from tour I would sometimes get back at like 
I don't know, 10 or 11 in the morning after a fucking 20 odd hour drive from Germany. And that night, I'd be like texting the bar saying, yep, I'm good to work. And I just used to go straight into work and, you know, that How shift, old were you? How old? Uh, that's when I was early 20s, coming in mm, like that, late, late teens prime, and early 20s. Prime era. And it used to be, I remember working with a lassie, I can't remember her name, but she used to do merch for bands. She, oh, I can't even remember the bands she used to work with now. Um, she'd been out on merch. She used to do merch for like Brian Adams and stuff like that. And she, at the time, she was in her early 30s. And I remember her telling me at that point being like, this will change and she's like when i come back from tours i need to take two or three days and i was like why the fuck do you need to do that i'm young as fuck i'm always going to be young and then yeah i noticed uh, i can't remember when that shift was i remember it happened at some point before covid but it was never as bad but now post covid i need two fucking days to sit on my ass and do nothing do you it mean post me. Lockdown, or Sorry, do you post, mean yeah, yeah. post? Uh, like, have you got fucking long COVID? Sorry, yeah, I'll clarify. Post lockdown. I mean, being away from it for that long, and that's when you truly appreciated how much live music actually means to you as a person. Yeah, but on the me. flip, on the flip, exactly what you're saying. I think a lot of us, me personally, like, and a lot of people, nah, a lot of us, me personally, <laughs> rare by me, um, like, we realised how hard we how work it when we work and how taxing it is and like there was a there was a point during the lockdowns when i'd figured out the twitch and i'd figured out everything else and you know i was i was make i'd, I'd fig, basically figured out a new job out of the whole thing and in my head i was like fuck me it's gonna take a bit for me to, want to go, to back go to on to tour to do all the fucking shit and then luckily for me i broke my fucking back so i can't in my head before any of this happened i was like i can't go back to touring in a van because i would just rather be at home touring in a van fucking sucks it is work we, hard we, fucking we work. have we have done that up until like our last european tour we did it was end of 2019 so yeah a couple of months before covid kicked off and lockdown started and we did three weeks in Europe in a van with hotels every night and driving each night and each day. And you're talking, you're talking like nope. ev everyone's got like pretty, like uh, Gunze, Kennedy and Davey have got like full-time jobs doing the digital animation stuff. I've got a full-time job working with allotment. Like it was fucking horrendous. And you're juggling, driving the van, getting up at 6 a.m. to get to the venue on time, swapping with the front of house TM guy and being like, can you please drive? Because I have to reply to all these emails that have just came in, like driving with a headset and talking, then getting to a venue and having to go in, set up, sound check, move your kit because we were supporting. Like, mm -hmm. it's not sustainable. But the thing that fucked me up the most, I think, was just not traveling because I couldn't, even though, like, I got comfortable during lockdown and I did enjoy that sort of period, that, that respite almost, being like, holy shit, right, we're totally out of this now. And, you know, that point when everyone thought summer was coming back, but was it fuck? And mm. then it went on and then it went on. That's when I started to realise that how much just playing live actually meant to me and how much I fucking need to tour. Sort of almost regardless of how we do it, it was all, it's like a, a thing for me. Playing live is the reason that you do this really like making music's great fun like we all make music but ultimately you're making it to perform it that's the end goal and that, that really fucking hit home that's when the sort of depression starts kicking in that's when you're like holy shit when's it coming back i'm stuck here i don't have any how, gigs what's how going did, on how did that go for you your when it got bad why well, well, just give it, me it, give me the timeline of mental state it, it got worse at the end of 2020 because I moved from Reading where I'd been living with one of my best mates, basically, by this point in the time that I was living together with him, with Dave. Big Shout legend. Boy. Big, big legend. legend. Big legend. Oh, what, six, four, six, five or something? Nine foot legend. Absolute mountaineer, can But I, he was with his missus, Lucy, as well. The fucking two of them together, just, they were my housemates, essentially, and it was fucking great. But I moved out of that into my own flat myself in brighton waiting for my girlfriend to move over from germany to join me and i moved out at the end of november and she wasn't coming over until the middle of january see that fucking period myself november to january not even that long it's not even it felt that's when you started doing the thing where i was still working so I was Wait, working this is november job. 2020 sorry yeah november 2020 right. to just middle of january 2021 and that's when it really hit for me. So it kind of been bad. And me and David done our sort of binging period. And you know that when lockdown first kind of kicked in, Ooh, it'd yeah. be like a Wednesday night and we'd be sitting there and be like, do I go and get a fucking case of lager? And he'd be like, fucking let's do it. There was a shop next to us in Redden as well. that sold Buckfast. 
done that. Oh, wow. Done more, done that on more than one occasion. Yeah, dangerous. So like all that shit had happened, but at the end of the, uh, at the end of the year when I moved into that flat myself in Brighton and I have got, got some really close mates down there, but there was just something about going to bed every night and waking up every night and being in a one bedroom flat myself with like no furniture in it that was just like at a really oh, shit and bro, dark time I of year. I couldn't have fucking done that. At a time of year where you're typically on tour, like December every Europe, every oh, Europe. Oh, December oh. every year you would be on a European winter tour. It just fucking happens. And I think up until that point, we'd been on like the last four or five years it'd been a tour at that time of year. And it was just the fucking, the Zoom quizzes every Friday night, but you were building up to every weekend like that. And you know, if you wanted to go to a mate's house in Brighton, it was all on the fly. And it was just a horrible time, man. And it was just a binge and it was horrible. And it was a three day hangover. The binge, the the binge fucking happened. I, yeah. I binged and I'm still like, still like, it, it's now my go to. Because it was fucking tough. I was super fucking lucky. What you mentioned earlier was just like, oh, I thought you were just seeing the missus. I went to see the missus in March 2019. Is that when it was? No, March 2020. Right. I went to see the missus and then the lockdowns happened and I got stuck here and then it was just, oh, well, actually, I'm just going to fucking stay here. But like, f- if I didn't have that, uh, there was a brief period of the pandemic where I was living with my ex-wife in the same house and that's when i was like Fuck. i need like, it was like it was pre, that was pre-pandemic yeah. but it was like shit's scary and weird yeah, it's getting, yeah. um so going to like if, if i'd have been there yourself there's, yeah, there's, no, there, like, there's no fucking way i'd be going i'd be googling shotgun <laughs> Shotgun with how to tie a noose. Shotgun. Uh, I don't think I could do that one, but I could blow my fucking head off. Yeah, a, a noose is a bad way to go. But yeah, I mean I, that was you know I, I think and like kind of talking to other folk about feeling low and whatever else. I was like, look, I'm not an advocate or not an advocate. I'm not a, a voice of reason on this by any means because in those moments, that's where I was kind of tested. And I was still doing home workouts and stuff like that, and I was really into them, but. That moment came on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Sometimes it would come on a Tuesday night. We were just sitting there and you'd be like, oh my God. And then I got COVID in the middle of it all. So you couldn't even see anyone. Mm. Even the people I was seeing who I wasn't supposed to be seeing because uh, you couldn't fucking, you were just there in the house yourself and you're getting the fucking delivery drivers to drop off fucking 10 cans for Aldi along with your weekly shop. It was, it was horrible. You know, I think there's a weakness in that and I think it's like reflecting on it now. There's you know i've definitely i don't think I there's, a, there's, a, there's a better a, be, a better relationship with alcohol now and that now alcohol is like a hobby to me and it's actually quite fun i enjoy these cans yeah, try we, not to we, boot the ass at every weekend and yeah, it's, we it's are, fine. are we going for an arcan i mean absolutely <laughs> but also my my thing is i mean i realized I'll, t- I'll be honest with everyone uh the pandemic, I drank every single day. I was dr- I was drunk. One one, one point then, I just think I should give context to alcohol being a hobby. I just realised how that sounded out of context. No, just, but I've like just, a hobby. I've just started a like drinks review page, which you've probably seen. Like Ali drinks cans. Ali drinks the, cans. The page is Ali eats drums, and now I, I also can't have believe Ali drinks cans. I can't believe it wasn't Ali eats cans. Uh, I don't know. Ali drinks cans. Ali eats drums. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I guess. Somebody, 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 yeah, I guess. Somebody told me to do that, so I went with it. But like, that's literally something that I enjoy finding these breweries, like fucking uh, Drop Project, Pressure Drop, fucking Overtone, all the ones that we love that do all the hazy things. Like that is genuinely something that I enjoy. Go to a nice craft beer shop and finding that, and then you sample them, and you can have three or four in a night and have a buzz because they're all strong as fuck. But it's not like, well, let's get twenty Budweiser and get fucking yeah. sparkle. My big one was. Uh, Kicking the old fucking ah, uh, oh that one. That was a fucking pandemic spectacular, and no. then now it's like I didn't have money for that, mate. So now <laughs> it's been like fucking. Well, I've got a successful clothing line, <laughs> but you'll be well, pleased. Stereotype. You'll be pleased to know that none of that money goes there anymore. And um, I just, I've just, you know, what I've noticed. Even like I tried microdosing and I tried macrodosing like mushrooms to try and fucking help with my head being fucked. What I've realised is I just love to be fucked up. So like, yeah, I could not I, go I, down that route. Cause the, I think I, told, I, I tried mushrooms recently, and that is just not for. It's, it's the same. T- re- I don't smoke weed at all. I can't smoke weed yeah, anymore. It just turns me into a cabbage. All I want to do is sit in the fucking corner, listen to two, and just not talk to anyone. Do you know what I mean? It just makes me go in on myself. Do you want to smoke weed right now? Have you got weed? Of course, I'm, I'm weed. not smoking. Not my first in this joint In like fucking seven okay, years. Okay, okay. On this um, I don't have weed. We're in a country that has weed. 
Um, the nah, but the mushroom thing is like I, it was helping me loads, and it was like because I was taking a micro, like a tiny little microdose in the morning, and then what I realised was just like a couple of well, like when I ran out because it's hard to fucking get it. When I ran out, it was like oh, I feel like shit again. And it's like oh, of course I felt better. I was on drugs was all of the high. fucking <laughs> time. <laughs> so now I'm like. I'll drink, I drink, I, I drink maybe one beer a night unless like there's an occasion like this and I'm off everything else and it's pretty fucking good for my brain. My brain, what what happens with me with any drug is three days later, it's like a, a it's like a fucking sign of a real imbalance mm. with, with your brain. It's like three days later, I am like suicidal. Like you get the bad day the day after, a bit hungover or whatever, and Mine's then the second day, three Mine's days the day later, after the day after, that's the worst. When you've got no brain, and that, that's when you that's when you question like, why am I doing this? I'm absolutely nothing. I'm, I'm worthless. I've I've fucked it, and it's guilt, and it's everything, and it's everything else, and that's yeah, that's where all the best "Bleed from Within" song lyrics come from, right there. Day oh two, shit! So you gotta keep doing it. <laughs> okay, so talk to me about how you joined Silosis. How did that come about? How is it? How's working with Josh? Because I've worked with him. It's a fucking nightmare. Well, he's not as bad anymore. Bless him. Really? No, he's he's great. He's great. I do enjoy working with Josh. I think I think the thing I enjoy. It's not most a nightmare. Of him, I feel bad for saying that. It's he's only just because very I said particular. That. If I came straight in and went, oh, he's an asshole. You would have backed me up. But no. my new Josh is just Will Putney, so it doesn't matter. It's a producer guitarist thing. They want you to do this and just fucking do it. The thing I love about Josh is he has a great understanding of drums. And he always says he's a great songwriter, phenomenal guitar player. And I love what he writes. There's very little that I would disagree with in the drum parts. There are certain things. And when I first joined, which was what, 2015, mm. they would, you'd maybe butt heads. But then he'd never really, I guess by the point that Rob was leaving, Rob was quite, um, what's the word? Placid, maybe. I think Rob just he'd given up caring really but towards yeah, the end. I don't think, I think Josh wrote all of Josh's, yeah, uh, well, all of Rob's drums. And especially towards the end, you know, Rob, if you listen, love you, mate, but I know that, you know, he was tapping out towards the end and he's like, oh, I just can't be fucked anymore. And he's just, his heart wasn't in it. So when I joined, it was kind of like there was a drummer who gave a fuck and Josh was like, yeah, do this. And I was like, I'm not fucking doing that. That's crap. <laughs> you and know what's funny about stuff. the tap out is like at the time, I remember thinking, holy shit he is like who would do that like Silosis is fucking yeah Silosis Silosis is fucking incredible like why would you do that and then now I'm like I just I get it he did a different thing he did a different job and it's like the security you get from that yeah I think the pandemic made me get it or we touched on it earlier on it made me get it like oh okay being secure is kind of sick but that, that's that's how I ended up joining basically because Rob was in that position and I think it was just a new job that he couldn't take time away from so it was a devil driver tour with Silosis main support and bleed from within opening and double duty it was double duty hey the, fucking uh, legend got, that's I, difficult I got the shout two weeks before the tour and it was basically I think it may have been Foster at the time or it may have been Josh and they were didn't like didn't you fill in because he pulled out on a tour before that no no that was the tour that was a tour. Oh, I'm sure he like quit halfway through the tour that you were already no, no. on together. No, 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 no. That's oh, just that's okay. just the rumor mill. It was it was before the tour started, and it was about ten days to two weeks before the tour. And he said he couldn't do it, and then they called me. And luckily, at the time, we'd what year was that? 2014, 15 kind of time. We'd played a lot of festivals and shows together, and you know, growing up, everybody knew Terrace, everybody knew Imperial you knew conclusion of an age just from being fucking around the scene in that time mm. you roughly knew how the songs went together so i was like what songs are in your set and they told me a few that i didn't know and i was like can you put that one in like all states of consciousness and josh was like mm, i didn't really want to play that live it's seven minutes long and i was like i know that song though i've always liked it can we file this in the set or whatever and uh yeah i did double duty so i song jumped fucking on rules oh mate it's it's still my favorite silos the song it has to be said do you want to wipe that up? Yeah, can you get me a thing to wipe that <laughs> up? We'll just leave this on the pod, though. I've spilled my beer. I'm pissed up now. Yeah, so I had it earlier and I felt really bad. Now I'm just going to leave this here, right? It's my fucking table, though. No, don't put that in the shot. I don't want fucking kitchen roll in my shot. Went from Nolan. Bloody, bloody amateur. Jesus Christ. Went from Nolan to fucking Wes Anderson in about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 
getting on. I do love Wes Anderson. Um, sorry, that's how... Uh, I'll grade it like Wes Anderson, just that scene. <laughs> just, <laughs> just that bit. Uh, I don't know why that was grading. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, was I thinking of Isle of Dogs? I was thinking of Doesn't Dogs. matter. We're that? talking about Alter States of Consciousness, Silosis. Best Silosis song ever. Um, but yeah, that's how, that's how I joined... Well, I filled in for them basically on that tour and it went well I think other than me and Bailey driving Josh and Carl absolutely mental every night getting shit faced um, there's some drum cams from that tour right and you are nailing it yeah and it was fun and it was it was different you know a lot of Rob was very um, thrashy with his fills so very like and I split everything up with hands and yeah. he does uh, Rob is very sped up EastEnders feel what a great analogy Aye, that is literally it's not it. mine analogy that analogy is from Mr. Michael Pittman from Zara who I what fucking, fucking hope they come back I think they did one Insane. one single recently I, I need did that band to come recently? back yeah oh they God. need that them to come album back that they did was fucking incredible like UK metal that was two and three uh, Zara three I, I they track the drums in my drum studio for both things no just for three but man, that album, if anyone doesn't know it, it's spelled X E R A T H. It's like Devin Townsend meets extreme, meets like fusion shit. Yeah, Opeth as fuck at times. Yeah. Like proper, like Ghost Reveries, <sighs> Blackwater Park. Do you know what? Shit fuck was... them. It just being just, just, I'm gonna, uh, feel bad. Just, just sign into a label that they shouldn't have signed to. We've been there, fought, came at the outside. Fucking sides, everyone. Like, like, and there's Jesus. big, big it's labels fun. where you sign to them and you think, well, this is it. And it's like they don't push the bands that are actually fucking sick. Small fish, big pond, isn't it? At that point, that's just a shame. It's horrible to see it happen, especially a band as talented as that. They were fucking great. If they'd have had, yeah. I tell you what, if Zerath had joined Sumerian, <laughs> fucking periphery big right now. Just it's so weird. Did that they, a, were the guys label. all wild that way as well, like to be in a band and to push Man, in. they are fucking freaks. They're Pittman so was he had a playthrough in your studio, did he not? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It was at the end of tracking that album that we recorded. Yeah, he was fucking nuts. And it was the first time actually, because I used to at that point I edited my playthroughs. And it was the first time where it was like finished. Yeah, this is like fucking Fucking like, back up. You heart machine did you I, used to Yeah, Heart Machine ones were edited. I used to think you were good. I used to not be good, and now I am. <laughs> but I'm on. Yeah, but That's they, the the heart machine ones, and there's a couple of archery ones that are edited. Not like crazy edited, but like like clean stuff up. I mentioned here this there. earlier. There's there's parts. I, I I did a bit on a bleed from that album that I can't play. We'll get into that in a minute when we talk talked about. Anyway, that album. we were talking about silosis and the jo- that joining process. That's how it started. I did that fell into. A, um, so that was double duty. That was really interesting. So that was bleed from within half hour. I would go and stand next to stage for half an hour or twenty minutes or whatever it was. And I would just what did you can. do in that time? Well, just, have just a bit. didn't change. I would literally just go off stage, and everyone was so like, even the the crew for Devil Driver, and just everybody was like, "This is fucking nuts." You're doing sets for both bands, and I was like, "It's not that bad." Bleed have been playing playing for however long, and. Yeah, because the, I, because feet, of the adrenaline, though. the feet. But luckily, Silosis were after, so I was warmed up for Silosis, which was better. If Silosis had been first, it would have been, mm. it would have been worse. You know what I mean? Um, I guess you're playing the songs you know off the fucking back of your hand. Like exactly. So it's muscle memory there. You get nice and warmed up. It's only six songs of Bleed from Within, and then I'd come back for what nine songs. Would you warm up before Bleed, or would you treat I did, Bleed I did like very a little? And I didn't drink for about the first five or six days of the tour when I was doing the double duty. And then I had one night where I went out with Bailey. Shout out Bailey. Alex mm. Bailey, my fucking man. Alex Bailey, we used to be in Viatrophy, is in Silosis, absolute works at Allotment. F- fucking absolute reprobate, but also the, the best guy most, in the planet. Yeah, the most insane. <laughs> I'm trying to like... The most insane... It's just like a fucking cartoon gu- character. Gu- guitarist, piano player, drinker, partier, just the ultimate wingman, just fucking absolute... Menace to also, society, but just so insanely handsome. Insanely but despite handsome, being maintaining like that a zero, wreck. but less than ten percent body fat when he just drinks like a fish and eats McDonald's for. If every he meal if of the he'd day. have pursued his like genetic potential, he could be like Mister Olympia <laughs> bodybuilder, fucking animal. Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't. He just fucking anyway, drinks. So anyway. yeah, fucking. Um, why did we get on a bail again? What did I say? 
We're talking about solos. You're talking about drinking. And you went out one night. Yeah, one night with Bailey, and we did what we did, which was get smashed. And I came back the next day, and I remember before I went to bed, I had the fear before I went to sleep. I was like, I've got two sets tomorrow. This is gonna be hell. Oh my god, it's gonna be the worst thing ever. And then I woke up the next day, and I was like. I feel dog shit, oh my God. You know, you run to catering and you drink five bottles of water and you have some, you know, five cheese and ham sandwiches and yeah. a big bucket of crisps and you're drinking Red Bulls all day. And then I played the two sets and I was like, yeah, that was easy. And then I just yeah. got fucked for the rest yeah. of the tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's yeah, when, yeah, you know, yeah. I could I could see Josh contemplating it by the end of the tour. He was like, oh, fuck, I was going to ask this guy if he wants to drum, but look at the state of him and Bailey right now. Uh, I think I got yeah. I got texted about that. Yeah. I mean, but do that, you drink before you play? That's the side Never, thing. never. Used to, and I, I do not touch it. The most... It happened once in recent memory when Bleed From Within were supporting Skindred in Newcastle and I went to Wylam Brewery. If you've never been there, it's fucking stunning. It looks like a museum and it's nice. They've got all the tanks and stuff and I'd been wanting to go there for ages and uh, I took the guys there before the show and I had three, like, seven to nine percent beers before we played and throughout the entire set, <laughs> Like it's fucking funny. Uh, Three nine percent beers. I was talking about like maybe a little fucking beer. No, 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 no. no. I went for it because I knew like we're really in Newcastle these days, and I'd been wanting to go to that brewery for so long. Loved all their drinks, and I went there and I just went fucking Willy Wonka. (laughs) (laughs) Just went for the most insane offerings that they had, and I remember just playing the set, and I was missing like meant to be like a cymbal catch, and I would just hit it and then like sit back and be like. And like Stephen, everyone else was like Gunzi's windmilling and they're all doing their thing. And it was just Snev that was noticing most of these. And he just kept on being like, what the fuck are you doing, man? You, just, you don't normally fuck up this much. And I was just like, ha ha, like just having a great time. Because I usually have a beer when I play. That's like my okay. so I always have a beer on stage with me when I'm playing. But that was just topping up the three, nine percent beers. So yeah, that, that's the only time in recent memory when I've been any kind of drunk. But yeah. as, as a rule, I do not touch alcohol before we play. So I used to be, I was in no drinking before you play club, like nothing. And then you broke it back. You needed to get through the pain. I didn't. And do you know what? Playing the drums doesn't hurt. It's just weird thing. Now nothing hurts. But like, it was more of just like a, I'm not having fun situation. It's just like I I'm literally like I'm fucking fucking talk about it all the time. I'm like at, like actually anxious at all times. So like going to play a show would just be I'm a big ball of anxiety before we play and I'm just not enjoying it. See, it's not even stage fright. Just like I don't want to fuck I up. I love I love that feeling though. Because that's no, nah, there's a difference go, between go, well, well, that, getting okay. ready to play on stage and yeah, do I, I, I have that, cancer? Actually, not, is there um, a reason that I do, might have I have got, we were in the sun a lot today? Do I, I, don't I, want, I didn't cancer? want it to sound like I was downplaying actual anxiety <laughs> there to be like, <laughs> oh, I just get excited before. No, because I love that. Yeah, I love because it makes me play. Fucking because great. I mean, I, we've, we've spoken before, like imposter syndrome is fucking real, and it's one of the reasons why I guess in terms of content and uh, twitching streaming or whatever i've kind of stepped away from it one of, one of the reasons we haven't done a podcast for so long or whatever just thinking nobody wants which to is so dumb what one of the like, both no, of those nobody wants to listen to what i've got to say nobody wants to hear what it is that i'm, I'm doing there and i do little things that i go through periods of time where i'll do a q and a i'll make a bit of content i'll you know those are moments where i'm feeling like okay i'm, I'm good at this or you know, i feel like somebody might want somebody might give a shit but like those dips at your peaks and troughs or whatever and like whenever it comes to playing a gig it's like telling yourself like we were chatting earlier about ego there is that moment in time when you go to get on stage for a show and just before it kicks in i'm just thinking about download there last weekend or the weekend before amazing show for us and as it started they start chanting bleed from within the i mean the going show looked fucking crazy it was absolutely fucking daft and it was, it was like one of the best shows we've ever played to be honest it's in my top five gigs of all time um but just before that that was where i just get you know, I'm, I'm shaking the adrenaline's there and it's, you have to tell yourself you're capable of doing it because I get that moment of you can't, you can't, you won't, you'll fuck it there. Yeah. And you have that mental battle with yourself. But going back to what you were saying about not having fun anymore, uh, or not not totally not having fun anymore, but I know what you mean. I know that, minds, that, that mindset. Um, Jason, who drums for the band All That Remains, we toured with them back in Jason Bittner? No, Jason... Um, Oh my god, I can't remember his second name. Jace, I just know him. He's a drummer from All Remains. Right. Fucking love the guy. Uh, like from the tours that we've done, we, our first sort of professional tour was in 2010. Soil work, All the Remains, Caliban, Bleed From Within. Um, and really got on with Jason, just connected with him. And I met up with him at a few festivals since, but fucking seven or eight years ago. But Jason has 
two beers and like a pint plastic cup, half full of Jack Daniels before he plays and then and, he but rips that it. whiskey he doesn't he, I, I never really saw him finish the whiskey before Owen goes on stage I think there were some occasions where he would but he takes big glugs of that as like the intro's going and it's a bomb bomb and he's like Wah! and afterwards I was like mate I can't drink before I play what, what are you doing there and he's like I get the power so I get the yeah, aggression that I get was the it. fucking the fight and he's like you go in with that little that little edge yeah that's me now because like I was always no drinking because obviously I, I fucking can barely talk when I drink but what's what's built up is like I, I not like I don't enjoy playing and it, not like it's like a, I'm nervous about I don't give a fuck if I fuck up in front of people or anything there's no like stage fright thing anymore but just more of a like I'm not loose I'm worrying I'm thinking too much about my parts I'm like rushing ahead of the mm. click and then it was like do you, you was, play you play a click now yeah Right. everything except two songs and then it was like when pandemic well, you know it may have co coincided with my alcoholism from the pandemic <laughs> but like <laughs> when it, when we came back to touring from gigging uh, from fucking gigging well, from uh, the pandemic we came back to touring and I was like like you know just like anxious and I was just like I'm just gonna fucking have two beers just, again two beers and then two beers turned into like a cocktail or one cocktail and one beer and then I like ripped and I was like oh and it just pulls me back like I play ahead of the click and it just pulls me into the pocket into the pocket that's a nasty habit though you need to get it oh it's just fine I keep being alcoholic because I was looking at Jace who we were just talking about and I was like that's amazing and then I was like I looked at my tour schedule and we were playing with him for two shows like during summer or whatever then I looked at his schedule and they were in Europe for like four weeks and I'm like Whew, like but the old, the got, old liver punch to get out of the bunk in the morning like oh there you go boy oh my god Fucking, yeah but I, I can't do that I mean I can go out and get fucked and I can wake up late the next day and sober myself up and that adrenaline keeps me going on stage the next day and that's totally fine like I can play with a hangover you see take, I can't I just like, I'll never <laughs> drink before a show and even now like we we haven't obviously done a lot of touring recently. Because yeah, you're reasons. fucking helping your drum tech with stuff. Get him to do everything. <laughs> I just, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I almost feel bad, even if I'm a pain folk. Because uh, I've never understood, we're going back to the drum tech thing, but I can't imagine. And Logan has done it. So I don't, yeah, but you I don't really did know why it. I'm saying this. But you like, did it. Yeah, but like, just imagine like never seeing your kit until like, you do a sound check and then you go away and then you come back and you don't touch it again. And I've, I've only yeah, ever done that. Yeah, I do that. that. It's I've only fucking ever, amazing. I've only done that, like, I've been drumming now for, what, 30, 20 years you're talking, I've been drumming. And I've done that ex that thing that I just spoke about there. That's happened right. five Let times me just in my fucking, entire life. For the fucking, for the normie, for the civilian, I got told off for calling someone a normie the other day. For the fucking, for the civilians in the listenership, the viewership, watching this on YouTube or if you're listening to this on the audio version the you're real life podcast you are missing out because it's excellent I spent ages spent all day doing it right and 10 grand imagine if to go to the office every morning like you got a 9 to 5 imagine you have to fucking pack down your whole full PC, desktop PC. <laughs> right? You got you got to take the you got to pack down the fucking screen, the HDMI cable for the screen. You got to get your keyboard. You got to get your your tower. You got to put your tower in a protective case. You've got to get your mouse. You get all of that. Then you got to take that in your car to the office, drag it up the stairs, everything up the stairs, put it in, plug it all in, then you use that for the day to do the fucking thing, do the fucking accounts or whatever you're doing, and then you pack it all down and you take it home. Would you fucking do it? No, you fucking wouldn't. But imagine you had somebody else that was doing that for you, and then one day when you were on a, a video call started, or you had something very important to do, but then they'd put the cable into the wrong Who place. Who gives a fuck? You just change your cable yourself. Yeah, but then what, you can't even reach it because you're in the middle of a very important. <laughs> no, <laughs> your analogy is not as good as my it's, analogy. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not working, right? No, but do you know what I mean, though? If, if people had to do that, and I know, yeah, obviously, I this, is, this is the explanation for the yeah, because obviously, drum a drum tech seems like a. And I think I take it any sort of sense of the word. It's, it's mad that you get to that stage and you're like, oh my God. Like, I guess friends of ours or even family or whatever, like, oh, you've got someone to do that for you now? And you're like, 
Well, it's actually quite a basic thing as soon as you reach a certain point because yeah. this is what else that this is what we have to do as we fucking go through our life on the road. Like it's fucking brutal. It's press. It's management. It's whatever else you have to do to ensure that the show actually goes ahead as planned and the band continues as a business. So that role is it's a necessity. It's something that has to happen as soon as it can happen. Unless you're punk as fuck and you want to be in a splitter van the rest of your life which you know some bands some people do, do but they are fucking psychopaths they are those mental. people they, will they murder microwave kittens <laughs> they will fucking <laughs> lob a hamster on a washing machine like they will fucking do that like mad cunts but do you know what I mean like I know obviously obviously <laughs> obviously obviously, <laughs> obviously like it is a privilege to play music and I'm incredibly grateful to play it but as a as every other musician, I was saying this, I'll say this. If you are not a drummer, it's an absolute privilege to play music for a job because you have fuck all to fucking do. You've got nothing to do. You don't have to bring all the shit. But as a drummer without a drum tech, it is the equivalent of taking an entire office setup, desktop PC, mouse, keyboard, No, screen. We're talking like lights and fucking, you know, taking your office light and your desk lamp and your You have fucking, to take the entirety of an office it, you know? from yeah. your house to the office, set it up, your nice, use your nice it, as well. make make half the amount of money that you would in the office actually and then pack it all down again it's mental guitarists and everyone they're giving us a bad name because they are fucking they're having a lovely singers. time singers uh, what's 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 scott kennedy like for loading in well i'll give you i'll give you one story right kennedy told me he would be my drum tech once on a tour in 2010 and for one day 2010 and you were still talking about it so this one, must be good. one day it's just funny because we reference it every now and again when I, <laughs> remember that remember that time you said you'd be my drum tech and he's like i will that was fucking ages ago and i'm like i know i fucking yeah. love kennedy so much <laughs> But like this one day in 2010, he's like, you know what, Ali, I'm going to start helping you with your drums. And I was like, brilliant. Come and <laughs> Your impression of him is so funny. Cause it's I was like, just co just come and watch what I'm doing here. And he's like, does this one go in here? This I'm like, that, that's, that's all right. This one goes in here and that does that. Halfway through that, he was like, I'm going to go for a fag. And I was like, cool, I'll finish this off. The next day I was like, Kenny, do you want to give me a hand? And he's like, I'm just, I've just got something to do all day. So I'm just going to go and do that. That was, that was the last of Kennedy's drum taking. Yeah, he helped half once. Singers. To, be, to be fair, he's he's got ev everyone everyone chips in and bleed from then. We are a good band in the sense that when it comes to load in and load out and the cases are there and everyone's ready to go in and go out of a venue, we're good. But obviously, drummer first in, first out. You have to set up yourself, take down yourself. Nature, nature. Nah, I just, I just, this is he's thing. usually there. Sometimes if he's always doing all the guitar stuff. They set up their big silly fucking rack with the in ears and stuff now and. He'll usually help if he's around, and sometimes Rory helps. Sometimes I think the target. pandemic changed me. Yeah. Like I don't think I could do it without a drum tech now. I just don't think I could do it. I've had a taste of it recently, and I, I definitely don't want to go back. But I know that it's, I know that it's there, and it's a reality. And the band's at the point where it's maybe just it's it's just about to change for us. Do you know what I mean? We're on the cusp of of changing on to better guarantees and slightly bigger shows, and you know we're doing like the second bus tour, but it's our bus and it's not a support. But you're Which, not if there. I can say this, is absolutely insane for how good your band is and how long you've been going. That's appreciated. I would have I fucking given up so long ago. And it means, you know what it means, though, is that now you're getting to that level, it's going to be so much fun. And you're going to be drinking before the show. <laughs> no, well, we did it. We did it there. We were on the bus and we did nah, it. Like, give you it. it was sold out every night. It was the most exciting thing no, I've ever been. Not a single no fucking, fucking tin. Not a single tin before the show. Well, ah, <laughs> no, it was different. honestly, it was literally, it was the beer that I would be drinking before, like we're at the side of the stage. You've you had another one to that. No, and I would have a beer and then Tom, who does all our photography, video stuff, he's like our sort of stage hand before we go on. So he puts down the set list, seal the one that triggers the intro and stuff. And I would have my beer and then he'd be like, right, guys, you're good to go. And then I would give him the beer and be like, can you just set that in my drinks holder? It's that beer that I'm be drinking. Sort one of beer. So yeah, I mean, it's, and it's not even a full beer in that sense. But you know, it depends on the festival. I've done, like, I, I say festival, it depends on the show. I've done some festivals where I'll be like, Did you not take from me once? Uh, or you you were the guy with the camera. Was it the Silosis right. that downloads? Remember, you were helping me out or something? And I'm pretty sure you were next to me and I had the bottle of Bucky and there was some beers and I was just like, Reynolds, can you pass me a can? Like one of those things where I'll, 
I'll be making an effort to go through it on like a really cool gig, like a really, you know, I, I, I don't know. I can't song, remember. Something. I was probably fucking on the back heat as well. You, aye. I can't remember Hand anything. Hand it to me half empty. Reggles, what's happening? You're just like... Bleh. I can't remember anything I've done in my life. The one thing that I hope... There's one <laughs> thing I'm like, like glad with the podcast is like there is... It's it immortalises the, 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 this shit. Oh shit goes I was in, fucked then, but I remember it. Wait, this shit goes in the British Library. They like hit me up and was like, oh, because you're on whatever list of decent podcasts or whatever. You're, you'll be in... Well, I'll remember this conversation. What's your new album called? And what's it like? And is it good? You try to tell me that you don't know the name. Shrine is the name of the new album. It's out in the world. There. Now, what, two weeks ago it came out? So, yeah, it's there. It's is going it, down a fucking treat. Is it good? It's genuinely... Because we, we, we're in that point, and I'm definitely one of those folks that... Uh, we mentioned this earlier. I, I, I've mentioned ego a few times. I fucking hate it. I'm not delusional in any way, right? Just, like, objectively... And I'm talking objectively here. I'm not talking about, oh, fucking, your first album was the best, which is a lie. It's a total... Who fuck. says that? There are... There no are, way. There are, there are cunts out I mean, there, there that think everyone, that... Because our first two albums are no longer on Spotify due to an ongoing dispute with the record label that owns them, Rising Records, they can get to fuck. And, uh, you want to look at that camera while you say that? No, because <laughs> if I say anything bad, the lawyers will probably try and shag me up my ass. So, like, the, anyway... We th- those two albums aren't there anymore, and they got taken down a while ago because we're trying to dispute the ownership of the masters for them. That answers all the questions of the people that are actually saying to us, "Where did the first two albums go?" It's like they'll come back at some point. Anyway, there's folk that still think that that album really we, we released in 2009 sounds and is better than the one we have just released two weeks ago, which was like drums recorded in real world. We've been writing songs now for nearly 20 years. Nollies. Those people are fucking mental. Way. They are, oh yeah, oh, brain dead, as you would say. That means brain dead for anyone, that's, <laughs> for anyone that doesn't Sorry, know. Sorry, I forget, translations have to come out now. I've had three beers, so I'm reverting to... No, 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 we're good. Um, but yeah, look, it's... It is the best work we've done. Uh, I'm talking about that, like, is it subjectively? It's is it just... better than Fracture? Because I'll be honest with you, I only listened to the song that Corey Taylor, Taylor shared. Because it, was, it it's, came it's, out like it's, fucking it's last week. There were, there, were two, there were two songs on Fracture, right? And there's even one on Shrine. Even Wait, more Fracture compl- fucking rules. So I, it's not like I'm not listening to it. It's the... I'm saving it and I fucking forget about things and I'm pumped. it's like I listen to heavy music at the gym and that's it yeah and does one of those songs have a place in your gym playlist because it's not the he- it's not the heaviest <sighs> some people don't think it's the heaviest you know what I mean but it's you know it's not it's not your Kublai Khan or something because I've asked you about gym tunes before and it's Kublai, Kublai Khan Kublai and it's, it's, it's not yeah. nails and it's not fucking whatever else but Fracture Fracture was good for what it was and at the time I was very proud of it but as soon as we finished Shrine I looked at Fracture very differently and I saw the places that we could improve and even when it came to the recording process and I started talking about Nolly how we had to up the game and up the level on the on the mix and the production and everything else so what what do you mean by that like why there were just for me there was it, it was a and I felt bad for Nolly because I went in on the whole as soon as we started the conversations me and him will always start the day that's a uh, sorry I'm going off on many tangents here but Shrine is our third album together where he's yeah. tracked the drums and done the mix and he's very much a part he understands the band he gets the music he knows the sound that we're trying to make but very early on like as soon as we finished Fracture I was talking to him about the next album and I was like we're fucking doing it consider it the trilogy we might keep working with him we don't know um, I think he'll always have a part of our albums in one way or another. But when it came to Shrine, I was like, how do we take this to the next level? And I kept on using that phrase, like next level. There was just something that I knew we could improve on. And I wasn't sure what it was. Mix-wise like, like, or songwriting-wise? Is he producing as well? There's no, we've always been self-produced. Yeah. We, don't, we don't work with producers. Um, but it was it's, it's mix-wise and sound-wise and just how do we fill it out? And there was a, a really funny moment where at one point where I was driving at home so much, but he was like... Al, you do realise Fracture wasn't shit. And then it sort of re- I, I sort of realised, I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that Fracture was bad in any way. I'm just saying what we've done since day one is there's always a bar that we set for ourselves and then we aim to beat that in whatever way that that is. Um, and I think there's something that can be done in the production here. Like, 
do you not think that as well? Let's maybe like reassess what, what we're doing with drums. Come on, give me some fucking juice. What? Well, drums straight away. We went to real world. We changed it up from middle world. Fractures to... drum sound fucking rude. It's better on Shrine. Tell me it's not better on Shrine. It's bigger, it's so, fuller, it's so fatter. What did you request? Like a different room? You you turned your nose up at Middle Farm? I didn't turn my nose up at Middle Farm. I went straight to Nolly. And it, was, it was not good enough for me. This studio in the middle of nowhere with the greatest drum room in the UK or potentially Europe is amazing. I went to him and said, what can we possibly do to make it better? And he was like, change the drum room. And I was like, really? Yeah, but that's just because Nolly wants to try a new drum room. Well, he'd You've already, been he, mugged off he, there. He had already been to Real World and he just knew that this place would be fucking great. And it was. And not only that, it was the vibe of tracking drums in there. So Nolly was in the same room as me in the wood room at uh, Real World Studios. And there's like a, a mezzanine level as well where we had... The right, room. he's in the same room as you same tracking. Same room as me as a tracking. The monitor was just done on headphones and it was very much a vibe like there's no sound replacements and stuff i have to say this because i noticed that somebody I, i've just posted about something on instagram where i was saying about how uh, proud i was of the drum sound because it was natural and full somebody's mistaken that for saying that it's unedited for the record i'm in a fucking modern metal band my drums are edited yeah. on an album yeah it's just fucking they're albums. on the fucking grid that's what happens yeah what has not happened there is there are no fake samples there was no dampening on any drums in that room like floor tom snare I had to have a little bit we were using yeah. a, a cussworth drum uh, replica of the tama bell breast that you own mm. so yeah we had oh the cussworths are fucking nice cussworths are fucking great i think uh, what's his name from thy arts got one uh fucking I jesse think, i think it's a similar jesse Beeler, buttery dolphin yeah it's a similar drum to what he has God but um, yeah nolly requested it was a uh, it was yeah anyway no dampening we wanted the big natural sounds this drum room it was amazing the drums were snapped to grid they all are if anyone tells you they're not they're fucking lying um uh, except for videos we're talking about album we're sorry talking on album, album. Yeah, yeah the thing with course. that is if anyone doesn't know and you should know if you listen to this podcast is there is a a preconception with music that people have whether they like it or not to do with the fact that dance music and all radio music is made with computers that everyone now whether they like it or not or they know it or not in built within them they have perfect metronomic time in their head from Whoa. listening to whatever's on the radio so you need to edit for the most part modern metal, yeah. metal and drums be, and, and, and I, think, I think it's part of and, the sound yeah. and I totally like I agree I've spoken with Nolly so many times about this like we've you know I've actually done an album with a band called Savage Messiah that is not to grid and it's out there just is it, I did uh, half, the BWP album I did no grid there you go nothing six tracks, tracks on this tape. album six tracks on the album I'm talking about were done by me and six tracks were done by Dan Weldon and there's nothing to grid and it is uh, it was comps we did each song three or four times and then they just picked the best takes but that was terrifying that whole experience but i think now like chatting to nolly about it more and more in depth i'm like it is part of the sound and part of the genre and it's like for the finished product where you're representing your band and the other four members that's totally fine to unless you're stuff. doing a video in which case if you, you're doing a playthrough if you, and you edit, edit a, a video yeah. you are a cunt you, and i yeah. hate your guts yes. and you're just a liar yes so, absolutely yeah um, feel strongly about that but anyway going back to the album Shrine the production's just the best Nolly fucking smashed it we went big natural tones you can fucking hear it um, and he f we filled out that mix we had a guy called Jamie Finch from a band called Anave uh, who came in and did additional production just adds, added loads of textures and layers going on in the background that just fattened up the sound we had the guys from Parallax Orchestra come in uh, they've done Alter Bridge, Bring Me, Architects, like, but we've done, like, all the MIDI stuff in our tunes for fucking, like, the last decade, but it was MIDI, and you would bury it in the mix because it sounded like some guy MIDI, farted yeah. through a paper cup, do you know what I mean? Sounded like... And then when you actually get strings in a studio, you're like, oh my god, so we've brought it to the forefront of the mix, and everyone's like, played from within for the first time ever, bringing strings into their production, we're like, they've been there since 2013, mate, open your fucking ears. We just buried it because yeah, it didn't sound as good. It wasn't real. So yeah. So we did all that on this album and it's it sounds fucking great. I'm genuinely so proud of it. And even to the point where like using it on like a recent project, it was like, what's your reference drum sound? Like anything you've list been listening to that's good. What did you have? 
I just let them hear Shrine. One song in particular. Did, Robert, did you not reference anything for Shrine? Uh, no, no, no. We didn't reference anything. We just went in with we went in with what we'd done on previous albums and said this is what I would like to achieve and let's have more of that and let's just make this bigger. And yeah, Nolly just understood. He understood the assignment. And we just got the tones down and we, we used Oh, the, he doesn't he doesn't have TikTok, but he's going to quote a fucking TikTok song. Is it, it's the reels. I've seen it on reels on Instagram. Yeah, it mate. came from fucking TikTok. Yeah, well, yeah, well, there we go. I'm just down with the kids, y'all. Y'all. <laughs> but yeah, he understood the assignment. Okay, so what is TikTok the song and... that you can't play yet? We talked about this earlier. Well, I've got a pretty What's bad. the song? Firstly, what's the song on Fracture that goes. I can't. Oh, The End of All We Know? Oh, that's, that's, that's the one that's on the fucking gym playlist. Yeah. That, I mean, that that's. I mean, I say that's fine. That's. I feel like. Uh, those wait, 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 wait. Like, is that the one that Corey Taylor. Did? Yeah, that's the one he loves. So he didn't share something off Shrine? No, no, no. It was The End of All We Know. Oh, I knew I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Craig's not so, listening to the so, new no, album No, yet. I haven't listened to any of it. Yeah, fucking arsehole. There's a tune on there you'd love as well. I love it all. I loved Fracture. Well, I'll be sending you the tune after this. Um, but yeah, end of all we know, those triplet patterns are very played from within, like... I used like to be able to level. do them. I used to be able to do them in Viatrophy. We had uh, fucking sufferance. And it's just like, now it's just like, nope. <laughs> Can't do that anymore. <laughs> but I used to play with triggers, and now I don't. Right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've I've, I've never triggered, and that was, but that was always like, I think learning how to do that under like a, in a studio environment and a live environment with a decent sound engineer and like wanting to make it sound good out front was like making sure that you got to foot, dig into those kick drums. It's the for left that. foot that you yeah. have to because you got to, you've got to that, lean into the fucking that pattern that you're talking about in the end of all we know, like. Dun -dun 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 it's making sure that left foot finishes as strong as the right that yeah. gives it the kind of it sounds like a fucking train's hitting you from the stage sort of thing that's the most important thing so getting see I think that's the best believe from within song but I haven't heard the new songs 20, but that mil song, 20 million people on Spotify would probably agree with you there that's, is that's that somebody, your biggest song? Oh, by a country mile I mean uh, coming up there song fucking rich. it's got over 20 million hits now on Spotify which is mental do you know what I mean but we've got like songs from the new album that are the new album's going up at a very kind of uniform rate. What we found with Fracture was there were songs that were peaking and there were songs that people weren't resonating with, whereas Shrine is now kind of every song seems to be hitting someone and just being mm -hmm. like, we love this, we love this, when we're putting out a message like, oh, what's your favourite song from the album? And everyone's giving us back. It's very When you do this uniform. joke voice, you get close enough to the microphone for it to sound really good and then the rest of the thing is... I just like, want oh. everyone to hear my funny voices. Yeah, they're really good. What's your favourite song from the album? See, and then, and then you're <laughs> fucking back here. For Mine's the sovereign. Mine's killing time. That's fucking... And now I'm talking like this. <laughs> Sound like you're from Dundee. <laughs> from Dundee. Hey, hey. Take the sheep to the edge of a cliff and you get a better pushback. <laughs> <laughs> if only you'd stood that close to the microphone for the whole fucking episode. Stood? You want me to stand? Anyway. Uh, yeah, All right, don't that was... slag me off for getting that wrong. Slag me <laughs> off for not knowing what your you fucking album's me. called. <laughs> it's time for your dream festival, my friend. I'm going to talk you through it, but yeah. we're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. So where where do we start with the dream fest? Where we start is where are we in the world? In the world, where is your dream festival? Ali Richardson of Believe From Within. No, this is tricky because New New This is tricky. No, Sorry. This is fucking tricky. No, the don't new, do that voice. Would you like if I spoke like this instead? No, yes, that's better. Okay, okay. No, just well, do your normal voice. <clears throat> Anyway, as I was saying... Shut the fuck uh, up. No, Where are it's, you? It's difficult. I want to say Belgium or Glasgow Green. I want to either be on the ground, the hallowed ground of grass pop or Glasgow Green. I'm going to go Glasgow Green yeah, because... Go Glasgow Green, then I can go. Glasgow, uh, you can go, exactly. All our fucking friends and family are going to be there. And Glasgow is... We've had many amazing shows, especially even since um, uh, shows have returned. 
and the the few shows uh, post lockdown, um, and especially the, the few European shows that we've had, they've been insane. It's been great, but nothing anywhere will ever ever rival the energy of a, a Glasgow show for Bleed from Within. Here so we. I'm assuming we here we. Here, Here we, we fucking, fucking go. go. If anyone doesn't know, do you, do you know what? Do you know what it is? It's the. Da, da, da. It's the <laughs> it's the fucking we, it's the Scottish equivalent of that. Fucking go. If anyone doesn't know, and there is statistically fifty percent of you that probably won't know this, in Glasgow for some fucking insane reason, we have our own fucking chant. There is a yeah, there's a chant which is here we here we here, here we, we fucking, fucking go. go before people play shows before people do only fucking if anything. they like you. I mean, I've never not heard it, so... You it's because you've been to good gigs, mate. Success. You, you don't like shite bands, so... Uh, but, yeah. Um, okay, so we're on Glasgow Green. I put an offer in on a flat in Glasgow Green, and it was rejected, but it was very nice. But you're so, still kind of... I mean, you're in Tristan, you're, you're, you know, you're fucking... Shit, I've given away your location. Oh, it's not fucking man. Everyone knows where I am. I'm <laughs> south side of fucking Glasgow. It's it like, south side of Glasgow, every day. What are you going to do? Pelt and eggs. Do? Fucking kill me? Pelt and eggs when you I drive want through. to die. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay, we're on Glasgow Green. Glasgow Green. Is, that's where we're holding the festival. Okay. So cool. what's the next step of this? Okay, the next step of that is what is your accommodation? Before we even go into a band, what is your accommodation? Right. I think this is uh, I think this is crucial. Right? Well, accommodation for where you're staying after it. Sorry, I'm thinking of backstage. I'm thinking of you can give me both. You can give me both. What's backstage? Because if I you've got an idea, hate with a passion when festivals give you a dressing room for an hour before you play and an hour after you play. Every single band on my fucking festival at Glasgow Green, there will be at, like a village. For just the artists. I'm going to say this with the nicest possible meaning. Like, I feel like you guys get treated like a fucking local band a lot. I haven't oh. had that happen to me in about fucking Don't 10 years. That's a nice feeling. That's just no, the but reality. Your band is fucking big and good. Not big. Who's, not, who's not telling these people, fuck you? With you are big. Corey there's Taylor's no, there's fucking no, there's sharing no fucking your fucking songs. I, 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 we're, we're, we're getting there, right? And I think that, well, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like the word big. I don't like the idea big. I think there's always something to work towards, even when you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're we're doing all right now, and we're getting our, we're putting one foot in front of the other, and we're getting where we need to be. We've been treated like shit for day one. I've always considered us to be the outsiders, and especially more in recent times, we just kind of think that's where we are. But we don't care. We put the blinkers on. We're in our own lane, and we go. Regardless of that, maybe some partly de- in influencing my decision here on the backstage thing, every single band at my Dream Festival will have their own cabin or own fucking... Uh, do you know what they'll have? It's oh, a Dream Festival. You can go fucking nuts here. They can have having, fucking heroin. They're they're having the fucking, they can have what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got any of that fucking smoke, mate? <laughs> Old skag boys here. You can no, have anything. Uh, we will have... Every single band will have a little lodge with a hot tub outside it. Like a, a little lodge it, that you would oh, get in the I highlands. love it. It's like one of those smaller festivals. It'll be like, it's basically one massive stag do, Hindu. It's one of them backstage. Bachelor party if you're it's American. 50% of you are. Bachelorette party? Bachelor, bachelor, bachelor party? Bachelor or bachelorette? Doesn't bachelorette? Matter. Is that the word? Bachelorette? Depends on your gender. Yeah. I don't know if there's one for they slash them. Just that, that, that. Well, that's just a party, is it not? That, no, that's <laughs> a that's a bachelorette party. <laughs> Coined it right here, right now. So nice. Bachelorette, bachelor, and them bachelor of that. A bachelor of A bachelor party or a bachelorette party or a bachelor of that. Okay, Reynolds said it because I couldn't. I've had too many cans. But yeah, what's going to happen is all of these would be circled because it is my festival is not going to be. It's not going to be overbuilt either. I fucking hate that. I hate band. I hate. I say I hate it. Hellfest has always got a great lineup. And there's a million it's bands. Insane. But I think. What is it? In fact, my, my, this backstage area would just get bigger then. And it will be lodges that would be around a pool. Maybe there'd be a, a, couple of sec, a couple of sections of pool, so it's not one big fucking piss-filled fucking thing. But there would be loads of little lodges like you have in the Highlands of Scotland. And uh, that would be for each band. And for bands that wanted to, if there were friends playing on the same bill from the same area, we could potentially say, well, you can go on one of the big lodges so you can all stay together. And every oh, lodge, very nice. every lodge would have a little hot tub out the back. So if you didn't want to be in the pool and you just want to have that time to yourself, and so that's totally fine. But then there would be a pool there 
and that would be the backstage area. And there would be shuttles that would take anyone at any time wherever we, wherever they wanted to yeah, be. Yeah, but Hellfest is kind of like that. Like you say that, yeah, like Hellfest, that doesn't Hellfest happen at is, festivals. I mean, but Hellfest is like, uh, hi, a random person. I'm kind of hungry. And you, they go, I will take you to the food. Uh, how do they talk? <laughs> I will take you to the food. <laughs> I didn't want to do a French man voice. I didn't want to do a rat. Uh, you a rat to to like no, French? I didn't want to do you a rat. Do that? I didn't want to do ratatouille French voice. That's not ratatouille. This is Mario from Gojira. I play the battery in the best death metal band in the world, and I am the best drummer. Boy. Mm. I'm not disagreeing, but it's mildly is racist. Question, is that a questionable accent? <laughs> Sorry, Mario. You are literally my favourite drummer of all time. Um, anyway. Okay. I when, yeah. get, but when you explained this to me off camera and you said describe your favourite festival or the best festival No, this is good. This is good. But I'm just saying there are some... You said the when shuttle you, thing like, as if there was a problem. You're thinking of UK there festivals. Are, but not, and there's, some, there's some in the, in Germany and, and Europe as well where you have to like schedule the shuttles. If they're none there, they'll make you walk. Not saying names, but like when you described Save the, the when you when you described the perfect festival. Say one that you don't really want to play anymore. It was a pain in the ass for us yeah. to get about. There was one where it's like we've got a sign in this time. I'm not never show, playing whack. They were just like, Ooh, rock on, fuck no, you. You're not. Your t-shirts are far too baggy for that, mate. <laughs> They're too far too long line t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my point is when you said about the dream festival thing here, I was like, it's just Hellfest. Hellfest is a dream festival. No, but it's oh, Hellfest and Glasgow Green. Yeah, right, okay. Oh, no, on we go. What's okay. the next? Uh... So, you're on. Yeah, we got it. We're Glasgow Green. You've got little fucking huts. Highland Lodges. Little Highland Lodges. Because Glasgow Green's massive. So, you got it around. We'll make it bigger. Around the side. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Dream Festival. Yeah. Around the side, you've got these little lodges for all the bands. There's a small amount of bands, so it's going to be pretty fucking cool. Um, who's your main stage headliner? Your dream. Also, oh, bleed are playing. So bleed are playing. So factor that in. Of course. Who's headlining? You called it earlier. It has to be two. I saw them twice recently, and it's just there are no better live band going at the moment. Um, you know, I would have loved to have had Pantera back in the day, but I think uh, really. You being serious? Other than being racist scum, uh, they, were actually, <laughs> <laughs> they, they were actually, you know, they're kind of the reason that I picked up the drumsticks and I hate that I had to come to terms with that in my adult life. But uh, Other than being <laughs> racist scum is so fucking funny. The acknowledgement is fine. Okay, cool. I mean, that's a different story altogether. That's very difficult for me to deal with, given that I've got a CFH fucking brand on my arm. But uh, yeah, it's not a swastika yet. <laughs> It's similar to Craig. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're, they're the reason. I, I reckon picked. you could change that. Hey, wait, Maybe that's how they designed it. The brush, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, two. Anyway, are they doing anything <clears throat> fancy? Two. Well, bleach from them. I'm supporting them for a fucking start, so that's quite fancy. Uh, sure, I like their you fans are going to be fucking very. they would be fucking raging. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, other bands are going to have on there would be. Incubus, Kajira, Mastodon, Meshuggah. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. I asked you for fucking one. Incubus. Will you get them? Come fucking, on. fucking love Incubus. You get fucked. If you don't like them. It's it's great band. Nerd music. No, I don't care. I don't, it, no, it passed me by. I don't care. I like some of them. It's my Mastermind. dream festival, you dick. Yeah, but I didn't ask you for the other fucking. Oh, well, you're fans. fucking getting them. I want that. I want. Uh, who's okay. the main, main sport? Meshuggah. Oh, my God. I actually saw almost that. I saw, I saw Tool on the Ten Thousand Days tour twice, and for support, that was the one with Mastodon supporting, right? No, for support they just played Catch Thirty Three, which had just come out at the same time. They just played it through the monitors. That was it. Amazing. It was fucking sick. But you're making that. Did you see me sugar on that last tour? You been fucking serious? I met you at the Battlelands before. <laughs> I met you in the fucking pub before we walked. <laughs> We've been through my alcoholism. <laughs> I have a problem. I can't remember who I, was I fucking am. I trying to get about this podcast before we went in, and then I went in early because Stephen had never, our guitar player from Bleed From Within, you went had never in been so in the early. So we went in early, and Reynolds was like, why the fuck are you going in early? It's shit in there. I was like, honestly, I don't know. And then I got in there, and then I texted you and went, this is fucking crap. I'm just waiting for my sugar to come on. And you just replied going, ha, 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 ha. 
You've really highlighted my alcoholism. Yeah, you have. Yeah, <laughs> like, he was fucked his I have dash. No fucking recollection of any of that. I'll probably have to pack it in, but let me have a sip of it. Anyway, festival. Two other headlining, the band on before them are my sugar. sugar. Is it, no one's doing anything fancy, just normal sets. You mean normal set? Uh, well, this is uh, your dream festival. Like, if I had a dream festival uh, and okay, the headliner uh, was fucking tall. Well, uh, two, two are playing a, a, a playlist of my picking, which would be mostly based around go, go. Anima Give me and uh, Undertow stuff and Anima. Especially. I'm I've so never, glad I've you said Undertow. Yology live, never seen Yology live, and I would fucking. I'd, I'd give, give both of Yolo- Yology. Yology. Thank you. Sorry. Um, um, but yeah, we've obviously seen... I rip some that hi-hat there. pattern off all the time. New Stray, it's on about three songs. <laughs> ripped it. Uh, you ripped another one. You ripped A Perfect Circle badly. Oh, on Viatrophy. On Viatrophy. No, no one not fuck about that. Everyone's heard it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't. I fucking... 700 monthly listeners so I think I've got away with that one <laughs> everyone <laughs> but yeah every I've ripped off every virtue for once <laughs> yeah I ripped off um, I've ripped some bits what did I rip the noose the intro to the noose dun 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 yeah ripped it off almost dun, note dun, for note dun, dun, stuck dun, on an album dun, dun, guess what dun, under copyright dun, law dun, drums dun, because dun, of people dun, like dun, fuck shut the fuck up People like Ringo. Steady on. Because the people like Ringo, who were just going, they wrote into copyright law that drums couldn't be copyrighted. Yeah, not music. It's not music. Yeah. It's not music, yeah. apparently. So I'll have want. that, please, Josh Fries. That's a free game. Uh, yeah, I've definitely ripped a few bits, little Mario bits, little Eloy bits. You just hear, you're like, yoink. Have that. Yeah, but that's why I, I, I have this discussion with people like a lot with drummers we're just A we're like nicer people who are more open and we to give fucking, credit when credit's due I got tagged um, Connor Dennis from Beartooth just posted a solo today and then he tagged me in the description and was like yo I nicked the fill off you in this and it's like that's cool as fuck we just that's amazing and I like I, I attribute that to and this is pretty fucking spiritual the first instrument on fucking earth drums was drums and people banging on shit and what did they do? You taught the person next to you how to do something. The, the drumming community is like not even being preachy or daft or whatever. Is You compare it to the singing community. Is that even a thing? Do singers even have a community? I think you're all two in your own bubble nah. to give a fuck about that. Uh, no, guitarists, no. you're all fucking wanking yourselves off. Yep. Bassists, who? Uh, kidding on you. Are Bassists, they, they come under, they they come under thick guitarist. But... Um, Mentally yeah, and the, physically the, the, with the strings. Drumming, <laughs> the drumming community is genuinely a community. I don't think anyone else, if you don't play the instrument, you find it hard to understand. I'm going to say this about, like, I'll use Eloy as the example here. So we've exchanged a few messages over Instagram over the last 18 months to two years, basically when I figured out who Eloy was, and exchanged a few messages and just be like, oh my God, you're fucking great. I think, like... I sent him a message once when I was shit-faced and Josh had sent me a video and it was during lockdown and Josh was like, have you ever seen this guy? And I was like, who's this? Sepultura? Pfft, don't listen to Sepultura. Have you seen You're the drummer? You're a fucking moron. Well, old Sepultura I listen to, but like, it's not a band that's in regular rotation or whatever. But then seeing the videos of Eloy playing, I was like, oh my God. Mind was just blown. It was like so much power. You so just got into Eloy, Eloy in the last two years? I can't remember when Josh said it. It's been like, when did he join? Fucking ages ago. Well, it was around that time. It was when the video. I'm talking started. like ten years ago. Don't tell me it was that long. I'm talking. I feel, I, I feel I'm like talking about too. Eloy joining Sepultura was like ten years ago because I saw him at Sub 89 with Eloy playing drums. I'm not even joking. This is when I could be talking about right now, and I've just said it's two I, years. I think you are, and I need to just. I'm going to have to pull up a Jamie. I'm going to pull up a Jamie on myself here. I don't know if this might crash my whole thing. It's actually ten. Oh my God. I don't even I was 10 years ago. I'll do it on my phone. Anyway, my point going back to drummer community, uh, exchanging some messages with Eloy and him just being a fan of what I was doing, which in itself was mental because I looked up to that guy so much. And then meeting him in person at Download at the weekend or just the weekend that's just passed. And I messaged him saying we would meet at Download. We were on the same stage. I saw he broke his leg. I messaged him and I was like, shit, you're not going to be there. 
such a shame. And then he, the day before download, I saw him on his story just posting videos of him. Like, I'm in Europe, this is my kit or whatever. And I was like, oh my God, are you going to be at download? You broke your leg like 10 weeks ago. What are you doing? Uh, it's fucking crazy how quick we, we need, he's we back. Need, we need to discuss a video that he's, he's posted recently. Um, First we, record with um, Sepultura, so recorded with Sepultura was 2013. So that's nine years nine ago. So years he ago. would have been in the band fucking 10 years ago. Yeah, that's insane. So when the first videos of him started coming up, you're talking eight or nine years ago, which yeah. is fucking terrifying because that's that's when I was made aware of who he was. And I still, you know, I don't listen to Sepultura in my daily rotation, as I was saying, but I have followed that guy and since that time, as soon as I was, as soon as I was made aware of his playing, mesmerized by what he does behind the kit the groove the feel the power he's top three. Oh, easy him and mario and benny greb that's it i mean Probably. top three metal well, top three metal him mario top attack yep that's it that's the top three i was yep. i was hoping that you wouldn't get that wrong that's yep. it there's no one in terms of, there's obviously people better there's people that they fall into sub-genres. Like I would say Danny Carey falls into a, a rock and a prog rock and yeah, whatever. Danny Carey's up You're there. talking about metal, metal. I'm talking about double the kick actual, is in there. No, but real, it's those three. Real drummers as well. Real drummers. Like oh, playing time. with power and feel and groove and pocket and going in and out the click and doing the thing. Like real drummers. There's something to be said about somebody that's absolutely shit hot but very methodical and very tight and precise and plays like a machine and you're like that's really cool and i enjoy watching that for what it is but who is it that i will like drop everything and be like i have to go and watch this person which is what happened with you like downloads and what i was going on to say earlier was i met him after the set and he came off and i, I was like fangirling it, it really happens at this point you know i think you're kind of there's almost part of you know it's like oh shit i'm at a band and I'm at some sort of level and I feel maybe shit getting a photo with somebody, you know, how do I feel about doing this? I didn't give a fuck when it came to Eloy and I was waiting behind the stage, same stage that we played, but I was like, right, the band were coming off. He was the last one to come off because he's got a fucking broken leg. And I'm giving my phone to my mate and I'm like, can you get a picture of us when he, when he comes off? That's cool. And Eloy comes down and as soon as he sees me, he's like, my man, my brother, Ali. And I'm like, are you being fucking serious right now? Oh my god! And just through the few messages that we'd exchanged, and he'd liked some videos, and I'd liked his stuff, and you know that's because you're really fucking good at the drums, right? I don't see it as that though. But you know you I mean? are. And it's not because you like you 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 probably compare you to a lot Somebody of people. Much a lot of people. Than you. <laughs> no, 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 no. A lot of people on the internet that edit their shit. I don't even think that. I just think I, I, was, I was saying this earlier. I haven't practiced drums. No, but you're so fucking good years. at the fucking drums. Properly. And every bit of footage that you put on the internet is so good and so real that the real ones see it and they go, oh, that guy's really fucking good. <laughs> Whereas with the people that put up like the fucking super processed edited shit, the real ones see it and go, I don't know if that's true. Yeah. I haven't got a fucking horse in this race because I don't care. When I see someone that's fucking real and sick, I'm like, fuck. That deserves the fucking shout out, which is amazing. And if that's why, yeah, maybe you always noticed that that is just sort of real stuff and that's how we kind of connected because he is all about that and everything's so natural and raw and real. Anyway, we had we had that beautiful moment. At, um, I call it a beautiful moment. That's, I, I, it was amazing. Just at the back of the stage, a download for five, ten minutes. And do you know what he did? He apologised to me for not being able to make it up to see my set. He knew what time it was, but he was um, down in the backstage area behind the main stage and he couldn't make it up to the dog tooth. And he apologised for not coming to see my set. And he had a fucking broken leg. The guy's doing all his drum parts with a left foot. What I was going to tell you earlier, he's... You know what he's doing for double kick parts? Did you see the latest video? No, I didn't know what he's, he's doing. He's doing the alternating... Nice. With an extra large tom in his left foot and just doing the and going on this side. That is what the fuck is happening right now with Eloy. It is insane. And he was like, Oh Ali, I'm really sorry I couldn't come up and see your set. And I was like, You've got a broken leg. But I'm fucking completely fucking unwell. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. Back to the Dream Festival. We I digress. So we got 
<laughs> Tall. Sugar main support. Sure. Second stage. We're at Glasgow Green. Glasgow Green. Uh, the We're, lodges. There's lodges. There's a pool in the middle of the lodges. That's the that's the. Uh, before we get onto a smaller band that we need for a small stage. The mm-hmm. side stage is only two stages. I don't make the rules, but I kind of do. Um, you literally made all the rules for this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to know what's catering. What's the drink sponsor? Drink sponsor is Overtone. No fucking questions asked. Overtone. Shout out Scotland. The best, one of the best, but one of the best crap breast. Yeah, fuck it, breast. One of the best craft breweries in the world right now, based in Glasgow. Uh, they made their last craft, uh, last which was sort of fucking love. You fucking loved that. Oh. Everyone loved that. They're doing another 8%, one. Eight percent, wasn't it? It was eight percent. Uh, double Glorious. IPA. We're making another one for Shrine. Not sure when it'll be out, but that will happen. Um, Overtone just make the best kind of beers, like similar to this, like just the hazy New England style, strong but so easy to drink. But they also do like low percentage stuff. They do stouts. So my drink sponsor would be them. They would be doing all Overtone. the drinks, and there'd be a special uh, festival. There would be. Beer? A, there would, be, would a, there be? be. There would be a festival. There would just be a really easy drinking lager. That's what it would be. That would be. Like, be. Wouldn't it would be a crazy, crazy thing. You're talking, you're talking like a hazy session or something would be the standard. There'd be a big stupid bleed from within special. Uh, there'd be an alcohol free option. Um, they'd do the full spread, the entire thing. Nice. What's catering? Can what are you eat? eating? Beer hall pizzas. Shout out the best mm. fucking pizza in Glasgow. I've never hall. been. <gasps> never been. We're going next time. Half time. We could probably go tomorrow if you want. It's a place in, place in Glasgow. There's beer and there's pizzas. Fucking absolutely massive beer menu and just the it's best. In the West, is it? No, where is it? It's, it's, near it's, it's, a, it's a two minute walk from Glasgow Central Station. It's a yeah, I know, Gordon it's Street. near just where fucking end and everything is. Isn't next it? to TGI's. Yeah. Beer Hall would be doing pizzas. Uh, we would have. Oh, what's that Indian place called? Fucking hell. Um, in Glasgow? Yeah, there's an Indian. Um, is it Obsession of India? No, no, no. It's like a Bombay street kitchen kind of thing. I don't know, but Obsession of India can fucking oh, get all their dicks out and I'll suck them all. Don't get your phone out. We're Bastard. good. We're good. We got you, anyway, you got your pizza. Pizza, and then there's an amazing. It's next to Topolo Mabam, Topolo Bamba or something. It's called. Doesn't matter. Stop uh, shouting right. out places. Um, all right, you got pizza for your catering. Okay, smaller <sighs> stage. You threw me off. Small band. Small Indian band. pizza. Small band. Small stage. band. Right. What have you got? Um, I don't know if they count as a small band. I think they're doing all right in the states. But don't say Sepultura. What? Don't say Sepultura. <laughs> Yeah, um, Incubus. <laughs> I mean, no, uh, Moontooth. Do you know Moontooth? Good band. I think someone else picked Moontooth for an episode. I feel bad putting them on there because they should be bigger, but they are... No, I that's feel, a, that's I, a I feel perfect... Like, I feel like they're on that path and their latest album is fucking amazing. Their first album was arguably better. And uh, don't slag them off. No one wants to know that. No one wants no, someone to say. No, I said it's amazing, but hey, look, 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 look. You, no you know one wants look, someone to say like one, the first one's hey, better than the. You just you slag those people off. You slag the slag first album off. people off. I said the second one's amazing. The first no, one might be better. No, but you earlier you slagged off people that said the you first. You just told album me you've better. not heard any fucking songs for Shrine because all you listen to is fucking one song for Fracture. You can get fucked. <laughs> no, don't give it a shit hypocrite don't don't be telling people to their face hide it give me the camera give me that one right okay sorry Moontooth your new album's fucking brilliant I really enjoyed your last one but everyone should listen to the latest one both albums are fucking fantastic he did right? say he thinks the first one was arguably better which is fucking rude it's arguably as in, it's a dispute between first and second sounds they're rude they're both fucking great Anyway, okay. can I please get back to my lineup of my dream festival? Of course fit, you my, can. Of course you can. The guest festival. festival now. <laughs> yeah, because the fucking moon is going to come up and be like, what the fuck are you saying about the fuck? What are you saying about a new album? Anyway. They're small enough that that's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm just slagging you off this one. <laughs> anyway, I love both their albums. And yeah, they would be that band on the second stage. There's also a small hardcore band from the UK that are doing fucking. They just. We, we played a festival with them in. 
Czech Republic recently and I was taking down my kit behind the stage. They were like the the band that plays after the headliner kind of thing. And they fucking killed it and they're called Grove Grove Street. I want I want them to call it Grove Street, but they are Grove Street families. Changed their name now just to Grove just Street. Just to Grove Street, good. It's they are yeah, band just, fucking rules. They are fucking UK power trip and yeah. I've spoken to their guitar player Sandy now about just wanting to help out in any way I can in like a managerial sense and try and help them out with any connections that they can get and uh yeah uk power trip fucking great band yeah they used to have like the gta logo and then they changed it and they got rid of the families yeah so um shout out to them as well they would be on that stage 100 percent. band's fucking good okay uh what's the after party hamburg everyone jumps on a flight straight to the reaper band and oh, reaper band i'm fucking we fucking go bitch i'm fucking we're going to the Reaper Band. No, no, I'm not talking the Red Light Street. I'm talking the Reaper Band. I'm talking like Head Crash. I'm talking... Don't give me those eyes. I'm, I'm not talking. going there. I'm not going there for my What hole. do you mean? You said Reaper Band. Yeah, Reaper, Reaper Band. Reaper Band means one thing to me. No, you're, you're thinking about the one um, tiny little street. Um, I'm not talking about that. Reaping. <laughs> Are you reaping the band? I'm sowing and I'm reaping. That's, so bad. That's, that's four beers talking right there. Fuck yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Reaper Band because Hamburg is just the best night out. It is that that one region if you've never been one region, one that part of the city, uh, Reaper Band is just a great fucking place. And we would probably just have that club uh, head crash. I mean, this is probably like if you asking, never slept with an escort as well, Reaper Barn, that's your place to do it. Sure, but any of your dreams will be fulfilled. I, and, I mean, you're, you're talking advice, like a dream. A hypothetical bit of advice would be. To take the money out, because I support sex workers, financially. Yeah. Take the amount of money out that you want to spend and put that in your pocket and then give your friend your wallet. And then... Nothing, Let them go in. And then nothing can go wrong there. And it's, then you just have your allocated amount. Yeah, it's a hypothetical. See, I would do that. This is a hypothetical. Yeah, I would, I would do the same thing and be like, this is what I will have for... <laughs> Sex worker, I will have this in pocket wallet go away, and then yeah, I yeah, walk yeah, past, it's good, and then good. I see, I see bar that says uh, the Astra logo or something. There's one amazing little rock bar called I want to say it's called Moonlight or something or Moonlit. I want to say it's called um, the Hard Rock Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of those cunts. Don't ever put me in that boat. But uh, there's an amazing little bar right, actually right at the end of the Titty Street, right at the end of that. Uh, there's a great little rock bar and it's fucking tiny but it is it's always a good night there you end up spilling out in the street and I think it's funny you've asked me my dream festival like I anywhere in any situation but there's something about I think if we had every band going there and the Reaper band was just closed to my festival and the accommodation was just at different points you would have different bands staying in different hotels but the are Reaper you band moving just, it now it's not in Glasgow now it's in the Reaper barn the after party's in Hamburg okay cool we're flying as soon as it's done and everyone's done in their hot tubs we're going straight to i mean every single meal is laced with cooking and my actual festival the so meal go, that's gonna taste bad just put it in the drinks well uh, well you'll be getting on the flight over to hamburg what i'm saying is everyone has to be awake by the time I they arrive i can't <laughs> fucking wait, <laughs> you can't wait for festival. <laughs> till my sugar fucking i ain't coming back yeah moontooth Gro- grove street and till my sugar moontooth grove street Little Hose. lodges with hot tubs. Ho Street. Ho Street. <laughs> Ho I'm Street. In. I'm in. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's it. Catering by Beer Hall and that mad Indian place that I can't remember the name. And uh, That's it. It's perfect. Is that, the, is that it. it? It's done. That's the podcast done. We have had a lov- lovely little time. I'm oh, and drunk. afterwards, we're there. Oh. The next morning. Go on. We go to a place called Terma Erding, just north of Munich. To get rid of the hangover and I hire that full place for every what single band. It? You can't say a random German word and, then go, and then we take rid of we get rid of the hangover at Global Globerville. <laughs> like what is that? It could be a fucking prisoner of uh, war. Racist. Global did you, you say did you just say did you just say did you say Global Globerville? You cannot be racist against white people, it's impossible. Carry on. <laughs> did you just say Global Globerville? I said blub 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 blubville. It doesn't matter. Uh, Telma Erding is like a indoor spa thing. <laughs> Don't give me a fuck. I saw what you done there. Don't go switching it. I want you to switch to me. That cunt. Uh, what is it? One of those fucking baths? 
one of those fucking baths. It's like a, it's like an indoor tropical fucking paradise, basically, with like a bar in the water. It's all heated water. Like, oh, before I was getting rid of my hangover, not making a new one. Yeah, but you drink through it. But you're, when you're fully submerged in water, there's something about getting rid of hangover oh. there, even if you're drinking through it. So, and there's flumes and there's everything. So everyone would go there after Hamburg, and then it's done. You find your own way home. Fuck off. Cannot, we'd, obviously pay, thing, yeah. we'd obviously pay for your own way. Right? We're not like certain other promotions. Sort of like companies. a weird version of Soundwave, but with um, escorts and stuff. I love it. I mean, please, can we do it? I really need to pee now. So we. I think we're done. I think we're done. I think we're done. I think it's a long episode. We've done a few things. Yeah, the videos. I think the videos work well. If you're not watching this on YouTube.com um, forward slash, I think my thing is Craig Reynolds six six six, which is cool and rocking. Um, six, six, thank six. you to the Patreon that paid for all of these cameras. One, two, two and three. three. Um, and actually all of the gear and everything. This is kind of cool. If you want to buy a t-shirt, that provides me with the money that I was spending at the Reaper Barn on <laughs> escorts. Um, and no drugs, because I'm off the drugs. So, but just... Still buy a t-shirt though. Imagine I need the money for drugs. Yeah, you can uh, you can buy a t-shirt with bleed from dot com as well if you want to fucking do that. You wanna do that? You don't go that? don't go tap don't go you don't dare touch that button to plug my merch store. You wanna plug that shit? Yeah, buy one of those t shirts. <laughs> oh, that's it. There you go. Alright, that's good. Uh I love you, mate. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Bye bye.